What is up, everybody? Hope you guys are doing well out there. And I'm going to make sure my headphones are fully connected here. A little bit uneven audio. But that being said, I uh, hope you guys are doing well out there. Of course, this is Legal Minds, where we teach you to be your own judge. I name Andrew Esquire, coming to you from the, the beach office, right? So we're still in progress here. We've got the Bangkok Bros studio right behind me here with some of the curtains. Uh, but I'm doing a little bit different of a setup uh for legal mindset today because well you know i just like to do things a little differently sometimes but that being said uh it's good to be with you guys today and uh, we have a doozy today we're gonna have a long 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 live stream today and yes natasha with the five who asks, is this gonna be alive or will it be late and gay we are on time and based my friends uh absolutely on time and based so shout out to all of you guys that are here with me in the chat. This one's going to be a fun one because I'm going to absolutely destroy Disney. We are going through uh, the entire audit. There is a bombshell audit that just dropped. We are going actually live here. Not a premiere, not a little baby summary, not, oh, you know, whatever. We're going to go 15 minutes. No, it's saying 15 minutes. There will be a summary. I will do a summary in the future but this is the this is the raw dog right this is the entire 100 you're getting everything there will be a summary of this because you're going to need a summary of this this stream will probably go at least two if not three hours to get through everything and even then we probably won't finish completely because it is the thing i've been telling you about for a, over a year, as long as I've been covering the Disney case, I've been saying, this is coming, this is coming, this is coming. And all of a sudden, when this comes, it's like, oh, it's a bomb, it's crazy. Yes, it's a bombshell. Yes, it's amazing validation. But anybody who's been paying attention to my channel and anybody who's been watching knows I've been saying, this is going to happen. Me has been saying, this is going to happen. Everybody else, look. On the financial side, you've got Valiant Renegade. That's great. Uh, you know, talking about the woke stories, all that. The only person who's been saying that they have been going, they're going to get eventually pursued on criminal behavior for their corruption in RCID has been your boy, Legal Mindset. Everybody else is on that note. They've been like, okay, Andrew, you know, and then some of them have said, okay, we, we defer to you, but it's pretty much been us over here. And everybody's saying, oh, well, Florida is corrupt. Florida is the one that has cronyism. Well, it's revealed that in this audit, we're going to go through it, that Disney is the one with cronyism, that Disney is the corrupt one. We talk about projection. And I'm going to say this a lot today. I'm going to say this a lot. But Disney and the left and the raging leftists, right? Because that's who they're in bed with. Clearly, they've, they've clearly aligned themselves politically with them. They are a massive sea of projection. Anytime they are calling you out for something, it is because they are guilty of it. When they point at you and they say, you are a racist, it is because they often have deeply held racist beliefs. When they say, you are a sexist, it is because they themselves do not like the other sex, right? They themselves, they say, you are a misogynist. It's because they are misandrists, right? It's because they are that way. When they are the ones to point the finger, what is it, the old saying, when you point a finger at somebody, three fingers are pointing back at yourself, right? It's always been projection. And for Disney, it's being exposed. This is beautiful because it exposes the depth of their corruption. It's not just like a talking point. See, for Disney, it's been a talking point, right? Oh, well, Florida and DeSantis are corrupt, but they don't have any facts to back that up. This audit is freaking 70. How many pages? 70. We're 70. Let's see. Let me go here. 72, 72 pages of, but actually, sorry, it's 80, actually, if you include uh, some of the, the last stuff. So it's 80 pages of pure facts, 80, 80 total pages, right? Uh, the conclusion starts on 72, uh, not K. But yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. 
Uh, let me read these through here. You guys already ribbing me. Take Grad, who's been a member for 18 months, and a base chat at that. Take Grad, a base chat. Said, oh, shit, it's live. I thought it was a premiere. It's a live premiere, a new technology that only Legal Mindset has, the live premiere. Speaking of live, is this live gifted 20 Legal Mindset memberships? What? Why? We're blowing through records coming in here to December. Thank you. This really makes my heart jolly. Look, we don't have snow over here in Southeast Asia. We have no snow, but that indeed is the best Christmas gift there can be. Speaking of which, another 20 from Hunch, the dirty roofer. Hunch, listen, uh, from me to you, thank you so much. And I appreciate the gifts. And guys, make sure you're accepting them. But Hunch, personally, I will just let you know that I sat my boy Legal Vices down and gave him a good talking to. We, we were talking about you. Uh, in Etail one. So I was I was representing for my boy over there, Hunch. I love you. I appreciate you. You're my dog. And uh yeah, we were we we're throwing back some whiskey. Um and uh yeah I was like Hunch is the fucking shit. Like Hunch is the man. Like the only I remember meeting you at Matsuri two years ago and I was like dude that guy's fucking cool. Like the first thing he did was buy me a whiskey. I'm like can't can't debate with that. Can't debate with that. Uh, Scorpion Red Dragon says you're good. I have three hours left in my shift. Look, I'm going, right? You know, and, and look, I will tell you guys this. A lot of other channels wanted me on tonight. A lot of people were were thirsty to get me on and talk about it. But obviously, look, I got to talk on my own channel. Uh, my camera's shaking because this table is like a, a foldable table. And I keep putting my arms on it. Like, I'm, I'm so pumped up about this that I'm like slapping the table. So I'll try not to, I'll try not to, um, I'll try not to uh, to do that as much. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just such. It, I get worked up about this topic. It's a very passionate topic for me. You know, this is uh, this is what I've been covering for a while, and it's it's so good to be vindicated. It's so good when you're right. You know, when it's like, okay, I've been talking about this, and I'm not just the crazy person yelling at clouds, right? I'm not just the person who is is you know saying something and it's not validated because I had a lot of Disney pixie dusters. I had a lot of them in my comments saying, oh, well, you're making things up and oh, you've been wrong and you're exaggerating and this is clickbait. Go yourself. Because now all of those streams, every single one of them where I am talking about crimes is now validated because now I'm saying, I, bumped it, I bumped it again. I'm getting, too, I'm getting too bumped up. Every single one of those has been validated because in this audit, they talk about all of the crimes. So now we are queued up for the prosecution of both Disney as a corporation in a criminal sense and also prosecution of Disney employees. This is real now. This is this is put out in a way in which criminal prosecution is going to happen. So let me say this one more time. The way in which this is put out, there is going to be criminal prosecution at the very least. Andrew F says, you are clickbait, but that doesn't mean you're wrong. Well, listen, everybody has a different standard for clickbait. People say, well, if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't say exactly what it is, then that's clickbait. Oh, okay, whatever. Everybody sensationalizes. How many times has Tim Pool had a civil war in there, right? You know, what is a civil war? Like, oh, it's a cultural civil war. Okay, but, you know, when you say, like, the civil war is starting, it's like, okay, Tim, all right, you know, I'll see you at Manassas, okay? Uh, Jim, Jeff Thorpe, for another 10 Legal Mindset memberships. We are up to 50 memberships today. We're already pushing for a record uh, just, just so soon in the chat. Now, our total record is in the 200s, but this is, like, the first 10 minutes, 50 in the first 10 minutes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, DJ Corey said, how do you accept the membership? Make sure you click it on it and say accept gift memberships. And you have that setting turned on. Once you have that setting turned on, you can receive the membership. You can receive it. Um, we're going to go over all the facts about the independent audit. So don't worry. I know you're a lot of people are asking. Um, there are people that, that did it and I know them. I know the people, at least some of the people that did the independent audit. There's actually multiple exports. I have worked with them personally in my practice as a special district attorney. So this is absolutely crazy for me because I'm like, I know this guy. I know this guy. 
And I've worked with them. And these guys are no jokes. These are not political shills. These are legitimate auditors, legitimate consultants. I've also met John McGowan and I'm going to reserve, I'm going to be very nice right now because we're in the first 10 minutes. After two hours, I'll get a little spicier. Let's put it that way. Let's put it that way. Um, so thank you, David Marsh. And with the 50 mindset memberships, we're at a hundy, guys. We're at a hundy. Thank you so much, David Marsh. You base Chad. Appreciate you. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much, David. And thank you for the gift memberships. That brings us up over a hundred. We're at a hundred rather. We're at 61 right now, technically 61 new members, which is fantastic. I love it. Thank you so much, David. Appreciate you. You are chat of the day. I'm going to keep you starred here. We'll bring you up, remind you later for membership chat of the day. Thank you so much, David. Natasha says with Iger's new BS, how long until the shareholders sue? It might be too early of a question. No, I, it's not because I keep bringing this up. This is something the shareholders can definitely sue over because financial violations, when you violate a financial crime, it's an ongoing duty. It's not something that like you violate and then, oh, well, you know, it's okay tomorrow because I did it 40 years ago. No, if you are year after year after year doing something illegal, that still is a cause in every single year to file against them. So the shareholders can file against Disney for their behavior with RCID insofar as it damages the value of the Disney stock, which is a very, very, very colorable case, especially after this audit. All they have to do is enter this audit. I'm so excited. I literally just spit on my computer, but <laughs> I'm really worked up over this one, guys. This is my, my, my bread and butter smash a like button if you like passionate mindset uh when he's in his practice area it's it's rare i never thought i would practice and my practice in special districts would be what i end up talking about look i was corporate counsel i was in-house as well i thought okay in-house counsel i'll talk more about in-house counsel stuff right that's in-house counsel it's like more business law yeah you know doing that but little special district law ends up being my go-to Crazy. Never would have guessed it. Never would have guessed it. Uh, the celebration dance. Uh, yeah. So let me get to it. And by the way, locals is up. Uh, locals is up for all those DJs over there posting wildly inappropriate memes. I can't show on any other platform, but I see you guys. And also rumble is up. So the rumble ghetto is active right now. Um, hold on. JD Corey over here on rumble has a message i'll have to show this one real quick uh because you know this is just this is just blatant propaganda it's so over on rumble jde Corey 2012 says watch out chat andrew's pulling a tubin he's getting worked up on this this is his corn and that is slow roasted corn at that absolutely listen jd Corey, i would be lying if i said i wasn't slightly aroused by this but it's it's like somebody does your they get in your house. This is my house. This is what I've been covering for a year. This is why people make fun of me. They call me, oh, you're the Disney lawyer. Oh, you're the Disney. Yeah, because they really screwed up on this one and they committed a lot of crimes. And I've seen this from the beginning. I saw this two years ago. I called this out. Two years ago, I called this out. One year ago, people were like, oh, I don't know. Now they're like, oh, wait, Andrew's right about his freaking practice area. No shit. Scarlett, welcome as a member. Appreciate you in here as a member of the RPG. Uh, and thank you so much for joining. All of you members appreciate it. Torgo the White, member for three months, says Bob Iger fixing to get Iger sanctioned. He's going to get Iger deposed now. He is going to get Iger deposed now deposed he is going to be a hundred percent questioned for his knowledge of these crimes this is happening okay this is not something now that like it's like because it's out there we'll get into it castle moral books says i watch you regularly so when i read an online an article online on disney it's all old news thank you those that have been watching this is old news if you're a legal mindset follower if you're part of the blm you know about this is this live says be a chat and hit the like button. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Bella Stella says, going to use this member chat when I have something to say. Oh, wait. It's all good. Hey, Bella, I appreciate you saying hello. Mwah. Love you, girl. Hope you're doing well there in the UAE. Appreciate all you guys just stopping by and saying hello. That's enough for me. I'm okay. I'm a very simple man. All right, let's get right to it. Let's get to the facts. Let's get to the beef. You know me, legal mindset, not a lot of foreplay. We get right into it here. So we're going to start with an article. So I want to say the, this is the article that everyone was forwarding to me. Um, by the way, some people saying, I don't know if any of you have seen Lady Ballers. Some people have said it's like not as funny as it could be and like kind of holds punches, which is kind of what I would expect from Tradcon comedy. But I do support the creation of anything not woke. So, you know, what I, some points the Daily Wire there. All right. Independent audit blast Disney for pulling a bait and switch on Florida. Literally a mousetrap. They're calling the district a mousetrap. Okay. So the special governing district that was controlled by Disney was a stunning deviation from the good governance standards of the state of Florida. Audit concludes a stunning deviation let's 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 get uh, let me zoom in here real quick a stunning deviation do you guys know why i was so mad about this i was so mad about this because this is what i did so i can tell you guys that what they were doing was patently illegal when examined and under due process and they're entitled to their day in court right their potential crimes what they were doing was wrong, morally. And when it goes to trial, I am very confident it will be proven to be a crime. They are not yet criminals, but soon to be in the future. Somebody asked in the chat, why didn't I sue? I had no standing to sue. Well, I could have, uh, I could have reported it. But listen, here's the thing about Disney. You don't just needle Disney. Here's the thing that you guys don't know about Disney. Because not all of you have done business with Disney. This is from a person who's been with Disney. You don't just poke Disney. You go for the death blow. You cannot with these people play little petulant games. You need to go in with everything. So what happens with this this audit, which we're going to go through, it has numerous accounts of corruption and criminal activity. You have to go in with all of those against Disney to get them. If you just come in and you're like, well, I'm going to report you because you weren't fair on one contract. That's not enough. The iron is hot right now. The attention is on it. Now is the time. They have so much defense. Disney has so much ability to defend. They have so much money. You need a giant rat trap for them. You don't just put out a little bit of a little bit of fromage, a little bit of cheese. You got to put out the giant rat trap for them because they have they have the money to pay for a lot of lawyers. They have the money to delay, delay, delay. Look at their lawsuits, guys. What have they done in their lawsuits? What have they done? And I called it out. They've done a bunch of procedural fuckery. And sorry, guys, I'm not, I'm trying not to curse too much in these, but this one, it, it, this is the appropriate language, you know, earmuffs for the kids, but it is procedural madness to slow down the process in court when they know they are wrong and they are guilty. The reason why they are delaying the court case is because they know they will lose. You don't delay when you know you will win. That's why they're delaying, because they've been able to obfuscate, they've been able to lie, they control the media, so they've been able to do all that. Man, that says two to three hours for this episode. Come on, Andrew, I need to get some sleep, my man. I might have to do a replay in the morning. Listen, bro, do the replay if you have to. I'm not going to do it. And I also will do a summary premiere, right? There will be a summary premiere that I will do. I'll record that for you guys. But in addition, this is going to be two, three hours because I got to go through it. I got to go through it. I'm the only guy who can go through it. Nobody else is qualified to go through this in a legal sense from the perspective of this is a Florida. They're not Florida attorneys. They don't know, okay, this is a, a crime and also related to special districts. Nobody has done a special district audit except for me. I'm the only person on YouTube who has done an audit for a Florida special district. It's just me. It's nobody else, right? 
I have been on numerous audits. You can find, you know, and my my famous doxers out there, you know, which never was a, which by the way, never was a challenge. It was just a, 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 a delay. But that being said, my name is on several audits in Florida, which can be found floating out there uh, because I've done them repeatedly. Scorpion Red Black Dragon says, Pip Andrew to Fox Business and Greg Garfield now. I'm happy to go on and talk to anybody. Anybody wants to talk to me about it, I'll talk to them about it. They want to get an interview with me, I'll do it. Anytime, anyplace. Memma says, hey, Andrew, guess what's coming next? What's coming next? 50 legal mindset memberships. What? Memma, tied for base chat of the stream with David Marsh. So we have David with 50 and Medma now with 50. Thank you. 50 squad represent. Thank you so much for bringing us up here. We're already up here at 150 memberships with 229 likes and 700 watching. Let's get up here, guys. Let's get 300. Actually, let me get Tree Fitty likes on this. Tree Fitty. It's free to like. It's free to like. Just like the video. All right. So let's continue with this article, and then we're going to get into the actual audit. Okay? So here we go. Disney secured the ability to govern itself in Florida for more than half a century by performing a bait and switch on the state. Used its complete and unaccountable government power to maximize profits at the expense of public good. Guys, in an audit, in an audit, I have never seen this language used in my entire life. Let me point out to you guys that audits often tiptoe. Audits are very, very precarious. Audits use that lawyer language, you know, the wormy lawyer language. Yeah, we all hate it. Even lawyers hate it, right? The wormy lawyer language. Oh, well, it, you know, like in uh, Disney's 10K, when they said, well, some people may not like our environmental and social goals. That's some wormy lawyer language. Right. When Disney says some people may not like our environmental and social goals, what that means is, is that there are a lot of families that don't want to walk in and see a dude in the dress who's talking to their children. That's what that means in plain English. And I'm here to translate from the snake language from what is it, parcel tongue of lawyers to English. Like, that's what my job is, to translate that to you guys. So, what, guys, for an audit to come out here and say, this is what happened, is damning. Because this is admissible in court. This is an actual audit. Now, now hold on. The article, this is an article about the audit. We're going to pull up the actual audit, which has that language. So, that language is in the actual audit. But now we're reading the article. We're going to get to the audit in a second. Don't you worry. I just want to give you guys a prepping. It's like a, a preparing for the audit. Plain Tiger One says, hey, Bob. I know you're watching. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm channeling my inner Elon. I didn't get to, I didn't get to do that stream. I was in um, Seoul with my good friend, Legal Vices. We were getting very drunk. We were drinking a lot of Irish whiskey. So I didn't have a chance to do a stream on Elon. I wanted to do a stream on that. In fact, I may still do a, uh, a stream on that. But that is for the future. That is not as important as today. You know, I mean, I can play the clip, but should we play the clip? Should we play the clip? All right, let's play the clip real quick. Let's play the clip real quick. We got we got to play. I, I mean, like for the channel, you know, like I, I think the channel, the channel deserves it, right? The channel deserves it. Uh, let's see. Where did I post that clip? Here it is. Here it is. Okay, let me open this up real quick. Let me throw on my headphones too. So we're fully... Fully equipped here for war. All right, we got this. We got this. All right, all right. Let's stop sharing this. Let's start sharing this. You know, we gotta, we gotta have a little bit of love here on legal mindset. We gotta have fun here. You know, let's let's just do this. There was all of the criticism. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger today. I hope today. they stop. You hope? Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money. Go f yourself. But go f yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. <laughs> so 
There we go. There we go. It's the same sentiment. It's the same sentiment here. By the way, David March says, MedMod Challenge accepted. You ready, Mindset? Come at me, March. Come at me, MedMod. It's stepped up. What you got? What you got, David? What you got? Uh, appreciate it. You guys are both appreciated, though. Ben but, and David, you guys are appreciated. But a little healthy, little healthy competition always is a great thing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Elon's sentiment there, that sentiment of go F yourself, Bob. Yeah, that's here because Bob thinks that he has the upper hand. He thinks that Disney is immune to anything. He thinks that Disney can get away with the crimes, but they can't because we are going to call them on it here on The Legal Mindset. And that's why David March gets it another 50, up to 100 from David March, who takes Chad of the day solely to himself. Thank you so much. Hats off, headphones off to you, good sir, for supporting the channel. We're going towards a record day already, and we're not even, we're not even done yet. <laughs> we're not even done. David March, thank you so much, man. Face as hell. You guys are coming through today. Appreciate y'all. All right. Let's get right into it. Why are we, why are we, let's not preface it here, right? But actually, I'll read this one last line from the article before, before we get into the actual um, independent audit. But here's the, the last thing from the article I want to read. This, is, this article is longer, but we, we might as well go raw. We like to do the original. So this is from the article, the last line. The audit of the Reedy Creek Improvement District, RCID, which was established by Florida to bring Disney's business to the state, found that Disney seized complete control of the entity and used it to structure, used the structure to establish one of the world's largest corporations. So Reedy Creek was instrumental in creating Disney. Disney took control over RCID in a shocking way that facilitated the most egregious exhibition of corporate cronyism in modern American history. This is in an audit. This is all but saying they committed a crime. And for an audit to say that, now everybody in the audit is professionally bound to stand by that position. Jumbo, remember, hold on, hold on though. Let's, let's, let's be very careful about this. Walt died before it was fully finalized and put into place and, and uh, the people were elected. What they did with it was not what Walt wanted to do with it. We, but we all know that. They didn't build the actual city. Walt wanted that. So they did not do exactly what Walt wanted. Now, Walt did want the district, but I don't think he wanted it to be used by that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it this way. I don't think he did. I think his family did, but I don't think he did individually. So I don't want to put it on a dead man, okay? I, I don't want to put it on him for when he was dead. You can't blame somebody when they're in the dirt. They no longer control something. So Hunch says, in regards to Elon's clip, it reminds me of the simple man's version of the great speech from Atlas Rising. It, it's, it's epic, but it's needed. Elon's speech was needed there because we're at a time where we're all fed up with it. We're all fed up with it. And I know, look, look, listen, I'm not a person who, you know, I, I try to curse less on my streams nowadays, and I get it. I have a lot of families watching, other people watching, people with deeply held beliefs that that don't curse. That's fine. And I, I, I do it only when it's such an egregious thing. It is my Jesus in the temple, okay, for those that are there, you know, with the money lenders, right? There's a point at which your righteous indignation is indeed merited. And telling somebody to go fuck yourself is merited because they have gone beyond the pale. Disney has now gone to not just lying, but being hypocritical, pointing the finger and saying, you're the cronies, Florida, when they are the ones that are corrupt. You are the ones that are putting out propaganda, Elon, when they are the ones pushing propaganda on children. How dare they accuse X and Elon of whatever they're accusing him of, which is all bullshit. Because we all know Media Matters artificially created the anti-Semitism. But that being said, they're accusing Elon because they are propagandizing two children and Disney adults. 
Che uh, cheers, GXP, to the $4.99 super sticker. Thank you so much for that $4.99 super sticker. Appreciate you, cheers, uh, GX, and appreciate everyone who supports this uh, this channel and, and everything about this. So thank you so much. Um, and then we've got a little bit of rumble, and then we're going to get right to the audit itself. So right here, uh, we've got rumble, which is saying for JD Corey for Buck says, as a lawyer, article is wrong. Disney is not the mouse, but a rat. So rat trap. You could have done uh, quiet Tom, uh, but I've only done administrative law. Yeah, it's a little bit different. This is not pure administrative law. It's actually like these in Florida, these are part of the actual criminal code. So they're violating criminal code here. So this is not just like we take corruption and government corruption very seriously in Florida. It's not a joke. It's a very serious thing. Where do I find the text of the audit? Uh, JL, after this stream, I will post the entire audit. I will pin it in my legalmindset.locals.com for free. You don't have to pay for it. I'm just going to pin it for free in my locals, okay? So I will do that after the stream. So you'll be able to find it in my locals after the stream. I'll pin the entire text of it. You can find it out there if you search for CFTOD audit. You can find it as well, but I'll pin it so for convenience, for convenience. So I will get the entire full article so you guys can do it. And I want you guys to all make videos on it. Everybody make a video on this. I want everybody to cover it. I just want to cover it first. Ike says, ho, ho, ho. Yes, ho, ho, ho to you guys too. Um, And let's jump off with it. Here we go with the actual audit document, all 80 pages of it here uh, put out by the CFTOD. So this is the CFTOD. Actually, do I have the, hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen, I can pull up the actual audit here. Uh, I think that is the audit. Doc. Okay, that's good enough. Good enough. We'll just use that version. Um, so you see the audit here. You've got the audit here. We'll zoom in a little bit. This is a report that was just delivered November 28th and finally let out to everybody in the general public. And it was put out by the CFTOD, but it was prepared for the governor and the legislature. So this is something that was put out by contractors hired by the CFTOD. It's intended for Ron DeSantis and the legislature because criminal actions need to be taken on this. Now, uh, the report's been prepared for the Florida governor and Florida legislature to fulfill the mandate of Chapter 2023-5 of Florida laws. Every single local government is required to do a audit. But this is something that was required above and beyond the normal auditing procedures. Now, there's a table of contents. Uh, to be clear, the experts that were on this, there's three primary experts. There's Professor Donald Koken. I have not worked with him. He's a professor from George Mason, I believe. I have not worked with him. He's the only one that I don't know on this. The other two... In full disclosure and in full transparency, I have worked with the other two on districts in Florida. So they never paid me. So the other experts have never paid me. They've never been my employers. Let me make that very clear. They were never my clients, but they were working for the same clients, the same special district. So these people have been engaged by the same places that I have in full transparency and disclosure, which is much more than Disney will give you. They will never tell you when they're associated or not associated with them. The next two, I am very, well, one in one district, the other in many districts. So the experts here, the experts here are Bill Jennings. Right. And we'll get into his background in forensic accounting. He's very, very, very good. And Kim Lee Horn. I have worked with Kim Lee Horn on many districts in planning them. Kim Lee Horn has helped me set up many districts in Central Florida and create them. So they really know their stuff. They are absolutely experts in Florida special districts. So there's other uh, there's other consultants and auditors that may be, for example, somebody in the chat was saying, oh, is it Price Waterhouse Cooper? No, 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 no. To be honest, Price Waterhouse Cooper has zero experience in Florida special districts. It's a unique area of law in a unique area of governance. Kimley Horn has done 
almost like they've done a lot of special districts. I want to say they worked with the, probably about 50%, maybe even more than that, in special, maybe upwards of 75. They've done at least some business with the district because they do a lot of focus on special districts in Florida. So I've worked with them. Bill Jennings, I work with them on one district, so I know these guys. Um, so they're good. They know what they're talking about. Remember what I said? The problem with Disney's lawyers is they don't know special district law. They know none of it. These guys know what they're doing. So that's what's going on with this. And this live says this document is linked at the bottom of the Daily Wire article for anyone's following. Yeah, so you can go for, like I said, is this live? You can find the link online. It's in the Daily Wire article. It's in other articles. I actually got it on my own, just searching it through another way. But that being said, yeah, you can just find it out there. But I'll, I'll put it up for you guys after this. Don't worry. Um, Lily Smith says they want to shut Twitter down. They work with others to stop free speech. Yes, Disney complains about free speech. They sue about free speech, but they don't protect it. Trina Wright says, thank you so much for all you do. You rock. Absolutely. And that's why I'm here for the longest stream possible to talk about it with you guys. Okay. So let's get into the, I'm going to go to the, the table of contents just to get you. So first we're going to cover the expert reports. Then we're going to cover the prior acts. I will skim over a little bit of the history because you guys, if you want to watch the history or know the history, you guys have, there are so many videos on my channel. There are so many videos on my channel for you guys to get the history of Ridley Creek. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, there's a water in here. I'm going to grab it. Let's see. Oh, God. Thank God there's water in here. Oh. I love having, I love being in Thailand. I have, I've helped, you know, that like a housekeeper is nice, you know, especially when they only cost like 30 bucks. All right. So I got this water here, which is great. Mm, delicious. All right. So the, uh, the experts, we're going to go through that. The history, if you want the history, you can look at my old, old videos. I have so many good videos that are a timeline of our RCID, a timeline of what they did, a time, an overview of the potential crimes. If you want history, go to my Florida versus Disney playlist. I have a playlist. Go to that playlist. You'll find all the history you need. <laughs> all of it. Uh, I like this. Robert says, forensic accountant could only be worse if you added a stiletto. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, and uh, real quick, before we go any further, we have, I'll do this real quick. We have a locals tip. So shout out to my locals, homies. Uh, $5 on locals said, read my past message. It is the true tip. Natasha, you can't, no, put your message in a, in a freaking, put it in a tip. I can't scroll back through all of, all of locals on live. I'll get banned. Locals are too spicy. It's too spicy. Can't have people seeing how spicy it gets there. All right. So we're, we're not going to go through all the history. I will skim some of this. But what we're going to get into is the negative outcomes. So the compromise, this is their governance. Look at this. Compromised integrity, lack of transparency, questionable purpose, limited function, and potential corruption. For an audit, to say the word corruption is... Insane. A Mexican Iron Man is with a client right now. But I know somewhere out there, somewhere out there, our favorite rabbit chicken landscaping company is frothing at the mouth. You do not say potential corruption in a audit. It just doesn't happen. Urban planning, their valuation, the lack of governing and conflicts of interest, lack of independence, lack of transparency, conflict of interest, bias at the taxpayer's expense. That's a crime. Lack of intergovernmental and community relations, poor governance practices, annual passes, transferable tickets, Disney personnel numbers, Disney discounts, cruises, merchandise, RCID employees receiving Disney years of service awards. Agency capture? That's all illegal. All of these are crimes, guys. Improper spending controls, spending on parties and social events, charges to the administrator's American Express, RCI years of service, executive memberships, poor management. We're not even into it. We're just reading the summary right now. Improper accounting? You know, Valiant's got a chub somewhere. Using district resources to manage the cities of Bay Lake and Buena Vista, 
sloppy contract record keeping entanglement, minority and women owned businesses. Oh boy, that'll be good. Deferral of road maintenance projects and use of public resources for Disney's private purposes. This right here is a massive crime. Then you have Will Jennings, the forensic accounting Chad, coming with the receipts. And we're probably not going to cover, we're probably going to stop at 49 because we're probably not going to cover what they've done since. Because what the district has done since then through the new acts is they have now, they have now fixed a lot of the errors of the past. The things that were illegal, they have banned, like the Disney passes, right? The things that all those people were messing with. Um, let's see. Okay, we got some locals here. We got some locals here. Let's, let's pull this. Let me let me poke this here. Let me poke the bear uh, of the locals. Okay, so uh, a couple tips here. John H. 80s Music says, $5 nudge for you to go on VR's channel first, please. Thanks for stream. So I actually talked to him. So, so as you know, VR and I are personal friends. Like he's my actual friend. And I call him and we talk, you know, a good amount, you know, when, when I, when I, you know, have a sad day, I call him up and I'm like, Oh, Valiant, Valiant, it's a rough day. And he goes, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. No, but, uh, I am, I called him and I said, I'm going to be the first, the first channel I'm going on is his channel. And I'm going to go record something with him tomorrow morning. So I'm going to record something with him in the AM, which is my PM in Asia. And that will come out for you guys probably tomorrow. So I'm going to record that. He's the first channel I'm going to record with. Nobody else, just him. So that will happen. Uh, next, we got a comment here by uh, John, 80s Music, said, hot damn, you know it's bad when the table of contents is spicy. Yeah, we don't even need to go deep before we see this is going to be an absolute bombshell. We haven't even started. We're looking at the table of contents right now. And what they're trying to promote now, which is integrity, transparency, purpose, functions, and accountability. And obviously, there's pending litigation. They have to note that. And they go through all the actions. Now, they've done a lot. Look at what they've done. So remember, Disney is accusing the board of cronyism. But look at everything the board has done. Look at what they've done to clean the district up. Things that didn't exist before, but now exist because they've cleaned the district up. Number one, zoning and planning, something they should have been doing already. They had zoning authority and no rules. Let me say that again. They had no rules. They were just doing whatever the hell they wanted to do regarding zoning and planning. Prohibiting COVID-19 restrictions and business mandates. We all know COVID-19 mandates were bullshit, so good job on them for that one. Creating lobbyist rules and regulations, that's a big one. Creating an enforcement citation program. They weren't enforcing any of their building codes. They had building codes, but they weren't enforcing them. Insane. Adopting the Florida Fire Code. Think about this. Disney wasn't following the Florida Fire Code. Oh, okay. Adopting a whistleblower policy. They had no whistleblower policy. Adopting a fund balance policy, a conflict of interest policy, a procurement policy. They didn't have these things. Disney had none of these things before. Menmut says in my Greta voice, how dare you? How dare you, David Marsh? 50 legal mindset memberships. Mad Mud is now up there as one of the top chads of the day. But listen, sneak it in. Never from behind, but always live. Is, is this live with 50 legal mindset memberships? Guys, we now have broken the record for legal mindset memberships on the stream. Today, we're at 284. We have passed the previous record of 272. Thank you so much, guys. For breaking the record. Is this live? Says it right now. Let's break the damn record. We did it. We did it, guys. We did it, boys. 990 of you in the chat right now. Smash the like button. We're almost at 500. 
Okay, let's keep going on these crimes. Or sorry, these solutions to the crimes. So approval of an expenditure in authority policy. Competition requirements. You need competitive contracts. Source selection. Emergency and critical purchases. So all these type of purchases, right? These are all within the purchasing policy, contract policy. Also, they hired a rate setting expert. Remember what I said to you guys about the Disney utility? You know who runs the utilities in the government of Disney? Yeah, a subsidiary of Disney called Reedy Creek Energy Services. Isn't that a little suspicious? Shouldn't we look into the rates that they're charging? Oh, yeah, they're doing that right now. And I bet you they're going to find some issues. Go look at my videos. Go look at my past videos on Reedy Creek Energy Services, RCES. They're going to find some issues. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking they're going to find some issues there. They've got new general counsel because their previous counsel was double dipping with Disney. They've also hired a separate counsel to review their last minute agreements and pursue litigation, which they're currently in. That's just the table of contents, guys. Here's the exhibits. Look at these exhibits, guys. This is not a joke. This is not something we're playing around. Look at the proof they've got here. Look at the car facts. They've got an expert report from Professor Koken, an expert report from the forensic accountant, an expert report from Kimley Horn, who are experts in special districts and urban planning. Also, from an independent financial advisor, the Public Resources Advisory Group, so the PRAG. I have not worked with them, but they're an independent financial advisor. Also, they've got the governmental operations included, the interlocal agreements, the Enjoy the Magic brochure, the emails, the handbook, the spreadsheets. Oh, all of the spreadsheets. Oh, we know we need to get all these spreadsheets. We know we need to get all these spreadsheets for our financial boys and girls. The cast member days, the emails, the booklets on the, all the special events, the meet and greets, the pedestrian acts, all these special events they're running here. The incentive programs, the agendas from their old meetings, the retirement parties. Who paid for the retirement party? Who came to the retirement party? The invoices, these are these are hard facts, guys. The insurance, the health benefits, the budgets, the key system, Reedy Creek Energy Services. Here we go, right here. RCES, look at that, I called it out. RCES, the relationship is complicated. The relationship is confusing. Oh, the budget, the timeline, their contract quotas, their electrician rates. Their trucking costs, these guys are fucked. I'm sorry to say they are screwed because they brought facts. They didn't bring feelings. Disney has only brought feelings to this. Disney's, oh, you're picking on us because of free speech. What free speech? What free speech? Nothing. Florida brought the car facts. Now, for memberships, we're exploding here. One legal mindset membership for Contrarian. Thank you. Even one matters. Everyone matters, Contrarian. And Jim, Jeff Thorpe, dropping 20 legal mindset memberships to bring us up to over 300. We're at 321 right now in legal mindset memberships. We are smashing the record on this for this epic stream. Thank you so much for helping me on this, this marathon stream here. Okay, I love I love the intro. May 1967, the summer of love was kicking off in San Francisco. The Beatles dropped their eighth studio album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. I love that movie. The war in Vietnam was escalating. Oh, old Nam. You know, back when things were crazy over here in Thailand. Anti-war protests were mounting. Gasoline was 33 cents a gallon, and a loaf of bread cost a quarter. That month, Charlie Kirk Jr., the 36th governor of Florida, signed into law. House Bill number 486, otherwise known as the Reedy Creek Improvement Act, his stroke of the pen formed a special district 
one that facilitated the most egregious exhibition of corporate cronyism in modern American history. Wow. This is in a financial audit. This is in a audit. Uh, sorry, a governmental audit. Actually, guys, this is, to be very clear, this is different than a financial audit. A government audit is more comprehensive. A government audit includes both financials and accountability and government regulations they have to comply with. So a government audit is also a legal audit in addition to a financial audit. It's not just a pure financial audit. So when they're saying they exhibited the most egregious exhibition of corporate cronyism in modern American history, this is regarding the law and their books. Hand in hand, like I always say, the government and the law, business and the law, money and the law are hand in hand. And in Disney, we have a perfect corruption of both. Benjamin Loken says, last time I checked, the, floor, the, the Walt Disney Company wasn't there when the Florida Constitution was created. Oh, that's, that's true. Jonas J. Campbell says, thank you for all the homework so I don't have to do it. I'm going to repeat everything you say and just say, Andrew agrees with me. Andrew, Jonas, you are very much entitled to that. And uh, I am happy to be the, you are, I'm happy with you, Jonas. If you want me to be the, the second show I go on after Valiant, I am happy to do that for you because you've been a good friend on this channel, Jonas. So thank you so much. Looking at the first part of the executive summary, you will love it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I already, I love this already. And I have it, by the way, guys, this is my first read. It's my first read of this. So I'm loving this already and I haven't even gotten into it yet. Right. Let's continue here. The mid-60s, following the success of Disneyland, the Walt Disney Company began citing a, a, uh, a scouting a site for a second location, one that would offer more space for physical and economic expansion. It settled on the warm and sunny expanse of Orlando. Walt Disney himself portrayed the venture as not merely another theme park, but rather a planned city that would consist of residential and commercial areas as well as attractions. The bold concept was given the name Epcot, Experimental Prototype Community Tomorrow. We talked about this. Go back to my video, Walt's Epcot. Everybody agrees what we have in Disney is not Walt's Epcot. And I know some people say, oh, well, Walt's Epcot would have never worked. Walt's Epcot was not practical. But guess what? Walt's Epcot was what did was what Florida agreed to. Their deal was based on Walt's Epcot. Whether it would have worked or not, that was the deal. Disney Corporation reneged on the deal. Disney backed down from the deal. Disney didn't go through with what they said they were going to go through with. That's on Disney. That's on Disney. Here, using shell companies to avoid valuation spikes, the company began buying up property. Then in earnest, in 1966, they started petitioning the Florida legislature to create a public corporation that would oversee the amassed tracts of land. Walt Disney passed away towards the end of the year. See, there it is, guys. Walt was not there to see RCID founded. He was not involved. Roy took over and determined to realize his older brother's vision to an extent. Now, Roy was not Walt. So a lot of people, Roy, now Roy agreed with a lot of what Walt agreed with, right? But he's not still not Walt. They're not the same person. And in 1967, with the enactment of Reedy Creek, he triumphed. Disney succeeded in its lobbying campaign, securing an East Coast flank for its rapidly growing entertainment empire. It obtained 39, more almost like 42, because they've actually purchased more, so it went up to about 42. Square miles of remote and largely uninhabited pastures and swampland in Orange and Osceola County. More than that, and critically, it had near total governing authority over the special district. That authority was so unchecked that Disney attained the power to, amongst other privileges, create not just fire and police departments, but if it chose, construct a nuclear power plant. Nobody else has that power. Nobody in all of the U.S. As years passed, the true nature of the deal became clear. Reedy Creek was allegedly a partnership 
an equal relationship between a private company in the state of Florida. In reality, it was neither in form nor function. Reedy Creek was simply a creature of Disney. The city Disney said it planned to build never came to pass. And to this day, the special district is void of individual residents. Yes, only Disney employees and Disney board members are named. Of course, that's gone. There's no people actually living in Disney. Disney wholly outmaneuvered the legislature and pulled off an incredible act. It established an extra constitutional governing authority, an experimental absolute monarchy, a corporate monarchy within the state of Florida, and according to the U.S., one that strikingly resembled a kingdom of yore. This is from Married to the Mouse. Uh, this is a really good book uh, by uh, Rich Fogelsong. Very good book. While Cypress Gardens and Gatorland have been drawing tourists to Orlando for years, Central Florida was mostly rural prior to Disney's arrival. Its two leading industries were agriculture and construction. The population was only 260,000. With the opening of Walt Disney in 71, it would almost double. Indeed, Florida citizens, especially in Orange County, were excited, feeling that Disney had planted its flag. In retrospect, it appears there was a disparity between what they anticipated and what Disney intended. Most citizens had in mind something akin to Anaheim, to Disneyland, where you're pulling attractions in. However, Disney's aspirations were more ambitious. As a special district, Reedy Creek was a step stool to ensure that Disney's location began running without a hitch. Nevertheless, they were not interested in a standalone park. They were beginning to develop property. They developed Magic Kingdom, which opened in 1971, Epcot, 1982, MGM, back when it was MGM, not Hollywood Studios. We remember that. The OGs call it MGM in 1989, Animal Kingdom in 1998. They also boast two water parks, four golf courses, more than 30 resort hotels, and hundreds of restaurants and retail stores. Disney is not only the world's largest entertainment company by revenue, it is one of the world's largest corporations. It also owns the world's most iconic brands, including ESPN, Lucasfilm, Pixar, Marvel, and National Geographic. They're big. The step stool given to Disney in 1967 would be a permanent fixture in a movable soaring ladder or a moat, as Buffett would say. Bo Buffett would call this a moat, which allowed Disney to tower over its rivals. power over its rivals and almost certainly dissuade others from even entering an area of market competition. There's no way to compete with this. Jonas J. Campbell says, you're a madman. Sending you the link for tomorrow. Also, Walt could have done it, not the corporation that owns the rights to his name. I agree. I agree. Walt, Walt had the vision. I think Walt could have done it. I think Walt may not have done everything he planned for, but he could have gotten it pretty close. I think Walt could have actually done a lot. I will agree with you on that. Also over here on Locals, real quick, we'll take a little pause so I can rest my yelling voice. I have to, I have to take a little, I mean, I feel it in my chest already, guys. Uh, John B for three says, I bet this $3 tip, they screwed over the protected groups they say to support. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Women and minorities? They absolutely did not do them a service. Then for five, he says, intro is like Jimmy, S <laughs> Jimmy Snoofa off the top rope. Cheers to that. Appreciate you, Jimmy Stan, but cheers to some water. Mm. Thank you so much. But yeah, using tax money is a big no-no. Using public funds for private purposes is such a crime, it's ridiculous. On uh, February 27th, Ron DeSantis signed a bill abolishing Reedy Creek. 55 years have passed since the creation of the Special District. Since that period, Man has landed on the moon. The microprocessor and the internet was invented. The Soviet Union collapsed. The global war on terror began. And artificial intelligence became omnipotent. In short, the world has changed immensely. For many, Governor DeSantis' actions beg two questions. Why now? And why was the carve-out for Disney allowed to last for five decades? For all intents and purposes, the answers to both are the same. As soon as Magic Kingdom opened, Disney in Florida became synonymous. The company's growth was meteoric. Its revenue skyrocketed. The company raked in $8.27 billion. The GDP of entire nations, such as Latvia and Paraguay, parks and experiences 35% of its revenue. Did they cite Valiant Renegade on that? 
No, they cited their financials. Okay, okay. Orlando has experienced an explosion in growth. Its population has increased 715%. The city's airport, which I, I mean, MCO, shout out to MCO out there, used it all the time when I lived in Orlando, is one of the busiest in the world. For the most part, all seem to swell. As Cogworth says in Beauty and the Beast, if it's not Baroque, don't fix it. That's actually really cute. That's a cute quote. That's a cute quote. Got a C's in the chat for Cogsworth, guys. Can I get some? Can I get some C's in the chat for Cogsworth? All right. But everything was not well, at least for some Disney employees and residents of Osceola and Orange County. Hardly anyone knew the scale and the scope of the problems. Only gangsters like me, who were inside baseball, lawyers who knew the law and knew how they were potentially breaking it, knew what was going on. Guys, the C's in the chat. Cogsworth getting a lot of love here. Beauty and the Beast. Back before they made them all lame and gay. Back before that. Before the Pandaverse. Before we entered the Pandaverse. Shout out to everybody in the chat, especially all the members. Appreciate you, all you members out there, especially the new 321 members. Awesome. Shattering that record. Thank you so much, you G's in the chat. All right, let's continue here. So it was not going well. Complacency and absence of a political will allowed Disney to use a public private partnership to entrench and amplify its corporate power. That changed in 2023. When Disney and the Florida legislature decided to fix the anti-competitive arrangement between Disney and Reedy Creek, they believed Disney's Reedy Creek was tantamount to corporate welfare, i.e. the state arbitrary picking winners and losers. This, and this is what I've been yelling for years. Guys, as a special district attorney, I, th I said we should threaten to sue Florida representing Universal. Full disclosure, I used to represent Universal, right? I said, if we really want to play hardball, we should sue Florida for unfairly benefiting Disney over Universal because they wouldn't give us a Reedy Creek. If they won't give us a Reedy Creek, how is that fair? How is it fair to give Disney it and not give it to Universal? You should give it to everybody. Why does Disney get the special privilege? Why? Yes, I also represented Bonnet Creek. For those of you, I represent Bonnet Creek as well. But um, I said that to Universal. I said straight up, we should sue them. But they didn't want to do it because they don't want to piss off the legislatures. Because they didn't want to piss them off. Little did they know, the legislatures would be happy. to. They would now be happy if they did that. But they did at the time, which was years ago, we weren't there, right? Like we weren't at that point. Peter Vanegar, new member. Thank you so much. Appreciate you joining here at the level. Appreciate you coming on in um, to the BLM. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so let's keep going here. In 2023, they changed that. They appointed a district, the CFTOD. And they installed a five-person board. Those people are experts, by the way. These people know what they're talking about. For its part, Disney resisted the change by desperately seeking to lock in long-term agreements just as the new board were seeing were seated. For instance, it came to light that annually Disney had negotiated a labor services contract with a Disney subsidiary, Rot Row. Holy shit, what was I saying? They found what I was saying. Reedy Creek Energy Services and their contract. This is what I called out. Guys, I had people message me from the governor's office. Say, uh, not from the government. They were saying, we forwarded your Reedy Creek Energy Services stuff to the governor, right? They said we forwarded it to them, and they're aware of it. I, I'm going to give myself credit here, pat myself on the back, for talking about the Reedy Creek Energy Services contract. I think people would have looked past that. Nobody was talking about it on the internet. 
Nobody talked about it but me. But what they're saying here is it was not proper. They negotiated a last-minute contract using Disney employees to maintain assets of the district, of the government. They put in place a new 10-year agreement obligating them to use Disney employees for the next 10 years, trying to tie the hands of the board of its successor. Other self-serving 11th hour deals between the district and Disney were set up the last 30 years, and in one case, more than 100 years, attempting to lock down a last-minute 100-year contract to lock in Disney's privileges forever. Over the next seven months, a new board worked to uncover what Disney was attempting to conceal and obscure. What is now evident is Disney not only controlled Riddy Creek, but did so effectively by purchasing loyalty. Guys, they have been talking about Reedy Creek employees quitting and Reedy Creek employees leaving. The reason why they left is because Disney bought and paid for them. They were bought off by Disney in violation of Florida law. The auditor is saying that. This is not me saying that. This is an auditor saying this. That Disney bought off employees and their loyalty. This is massively criminal. This is not like, oh, well, well you know, theoretically it might be. A no, this is a crime. This is a crime. <laughs> like, this is an actual huge crime. I, I'm, I'm getting, this is, this is crazy. You don't see this. The SEC should be involved in this. The IRS should be involved in this. Absolutely. If they don't get involved in this, there's a problem now. Because you have a financial audit that says this. If they don't do it, the only reason why they wouldn't do it is if Joe Biden and Bob Iger get together. If they don't investigate this, the only reason is government corruption at the federal level. This is, this is massive. Maria Torrio is a new member, but you were an old member too. You're rejoining Maria. But welcome back to the replay, gang. I appreciate you at any level. Welcome to all the new members. Welcome to the base legal mindset. Let's continue here with this just destruction of Disney. What is now evident, so we got that, is a purchase loyalty. The vast majority of employees were working hard to do their job. So, so let's be clear. The vast majority of people were good people. So, so okay, the regular line employees, the working man. The working man is not to blame here, okay? It's the upper management and the middle management. Those were the ones that were corrupted. The ones that were corrupted were the upper management and the middle management. It was not the blue collar guy, okay? So don't think about that. Now I know, okay, Pete, you asked a question. Any statute of limitations? Financial duties and governmental responsibilities are ongoing. So every year they have a responsibility not to do this. So the statute does not run on these things. Gosney says, the Office of Statewide Prosecution, here it comes, it should focus on using RCID to benefit the private corporation. Makes sense to jurors in a criminal trial. I agree, Gosney. I agree. I agree. To benefit the private corporation. If they can show that, it's clear. It's a slam dunk. I agree with you guys. It's saying, this is public money. You use this for Disney. That is a crime. Case closed. This is tax money. This was used for a private purpose. That's a crime. Case closed. That's it. No, and, and, and smoke, smoke Jaguar 6. Hold on. If a blue car guy is breaking the law knowingly, they are responsible. Yes. I'm not saying they're off the hook, Smoke. I'm just saying some of those guys did not actually know that so some of the regular employees like look like there's like the 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 landscaper right mexican iron man he's like landscaping the lawn right he didn't know right you're not blaming jose who's tripping the hedges right he's not culpable but let's say you're a firefighter and let's say you are a blue collar line firefighter but you are knowingly participating in something you know is illegal yeah that's a problem that is a problem if you do it knowingly. Shout out to Camelot331. This is what a beautiful man. You're beautiful too, Camelot. 
You're beautiful. And people should appreciate you for the lovely, lovely thought that you are. And you are always in my thoughts and feelings. See you, brother. Um, and uh, yeah, happy to come on and talk about this Disney stuff with any other channel. But of course, the first two have to be Valiant and Jonas. After that, it's everybody else. It's open season. All right. Okay. So they're providing employees with benefits. And look at this. Because decisions made by management <laughs> and the board. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Killing my voice here by yelling. Because <laughs> their decisions were tainted with the appearance of impropriety. <laughs> so they're all but saying they committed a crime. Now, to be very clear, the reason why you have to say, okay, look, before they've gone to trial, <laughs> before they've gone to trial, you have to say these are alleged crimes, potential crimes, right? Because they are due due process. I believe that. I absolutely believe that. Everybody is due due process. But I believe in a court of law, Disney loses. Okay? Disney loses. That's my belief. Based on facts. <clears throat> Not surprisingly, Disney employee, district's employees believed it was their job to prioritize the interest of Disney because benefits and perks were akin to bribes. This right here is what I've been saying. Offering employees special benefits is a bribe. That is a bribe. That is corruption. This is exactly the same as offering front row tickets to a basketball game when you're trying to negotiate a contract with the government, right? So you give the mayor courtside seat. Sorry, guys. Bob got me. Bob got me. Sorry about that, guys. They're coming for me. Uh, Mickey Mouse sends his regards. I like it. I like it. Guys, please smash the like button for me getting uh, targeted by Disney. Getting a DDoS attack here in Thailand. Yeah. Rat chewing on the cable. We know they're trying to stop me. We know they're trying to stop me. They called YouTube. They're like, go, go execute. Now we're we're here. We're here. We're here. I ain't going nowhere. Speaking of which, let's actually get one of these locals here real quick. Well, as we recover here. KK's under my bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> she's known if I've been naughty or nice. All right. C3 Metal for a buck says these Disney quotes are 100% better than Sniper Wolf's cute BS in her lawsuit. No, because they're true, C3 Metal. All these quotes are true. They're not like exaggerated or whatever. They're 100% legit. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, that's what we got. All right, continuing here with the audit. Control over the inner workings of district was exercised in additional ways. For instance, contract offers were sent out only to a closed list of approved bidders. Not only was there no way for new business to enter, but no mechanism existed where the district was to be rendered fair market prices. This is a huge violation of government practices. To have a closed bidding, only closed bidding. And by the way, remember they said they cared about like women and minorities? Well, how are women and minorities supposed to uh, supposed to participate if they can't bid there's no way for them to bid it's a closed bidding system that is the definition of cronyism how is a government supposed to get fair prices that is not okay now jl in some industries a approved bidder list is okay but what you have to go through is you go through what's called an RFQ process. So an RFQ process is called request for qualifications. Request for qualifications. So what you do is you get qualified bidders that you approve based on those qualifications and you select from that list of qualified bidders. But it's not a closed process. That's completely different. That's Super illegal. <clears throat> um, how liable is Iger? Well, we'll see. That's what's going to take a deposition. But and, and and I understand all of the baby rats are going to protect the Godfather rat. I get it. Iger is like the Godfather, and they're going to protect him. I get that part, right? That's why it's got to be a Rico type case against them, because the real responsibility goes to the top rico against disney i'm here for it i'm here for it under trump definitely possible definitely possible all right continuing here disney sold RCD as one thing in the 1960s but there's a deception behind the pitch and sale the company promised affordable housing, transportation, social and community services. Today, 100,000 people commute to work. There is no workforce housing or schools. It did not develop any public services directed at anyone but Disney tourists. RCID never made Disney pay impact fees, as all other developers. Let me confirm this. Yes, every single other developer pays millions in, develop in impact fees every year millions but disney gets an exemption universal pays sea world pays legoland pays but they don't pay transportation impact fees linked to hotels alone hotels alone would be 130 million in just orange county not osceola county just orange county so when Central Florida residents sit in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on I-4, they should know that Disney is to blame. That is absolutely right. Those impact fees go towards roads. Disney has withheld that money from building public roads for commuting. That could go towards highways. But they got out of that. They ratted their way out of that. Disney paid ad valorem taxes to Orange County and Osceola when they were sued. It also engaged in aggressive litigation, filing dozens and dozens of lawsuits to eliminate as much as Disney's tax burden as possible. The RCID was a mousetrap. Here it is. Here's the quote. But we know at the legal mindset, it was really a rat trap. 
a rat trap. Disney dangled savory cheese in front of Florida legislature and the people of Orlando, but quickly abandoned its city building pretense. RCID was unlike any other special district in Florida. It was directed by the legislature and endowed with super broad, exceptionally broad, unique powers at Disney's sole discretion. It was significantly and inherently flawed through the near absence of parameters or supervision and the fact that it was intended to serve Disney above all else, despite scores of other taxpayers located in the district. Because remember, Disney owns 84%, but not all. Not all the property, and those other taxpayers have rights too. Disney even paid property tax liabilities owed by the Board of Supervisors in a wildly inappropriate effort to capture local regulators. That's illegal. In 1998, until 1998, they even kept RCID's employees on its own payroll. Now, I know I see someone saying the audit sounds sassy. This isn't sass. This is like, it's so bad. You have to, it goes beyond bad in the world of government audits. This is horrible. Maria Trujillo says Disney never forgot, never forgot about the first rule of corruption. Never write anything down. The arrogance of these people is mind blowing. Glad the rat is caught. Absolutely. It is about time. The auditor is pissed. Lance says the auditor sounds pissed. The auditor is pissed because this is flagrantly illegal. Like it, they've they've been doing audits their entire career, and this is beyond the pale of any other audit and what they've seen. Disney insists the unique structure of the district was integral to the growth of Central Florida. The truth is, the Disney needed the structure to maximize profits which above and beyond succeeding as a business. To be sure, Disney still would have been tremendously profitable absent the unparalleled carve-outs it received through RCID. What's more, the company's success has been far less reciprocal than Disney would care to admit. In November 2023, institutional investors attribute 85% of their stock value to its theme parks. Guys, where's Valiant at? 85% of Disney's stock value is its theme park. Not Marvel, not woke Lucasfilm. Disney's value is its theme parks. Jay Lasagna 90 said, ran the report through GPT, asked it what crimes. It stated state crimes, breach of fiduciary duty, official misconduct, and bribery. From GPT. Which, by the way, GPT is being conservative on that. That's conservative. I think we go beyond those, Jay Lozano. But damn, awesome. I love you getting AI to convict it. Even AI thinks Disney is guilty. I love it. I love it. And by the way, I have a stream where I go over all of them. Oh, there's more. There's more. Misuse of public office. Theft and misappropriation of public funds. Yes. Yes, theft and misappropriation of funds, big time. $2 ARC5 says, as Barnes says, never in writing, always in cash. Oh, yeah, baby. Never in writing, always in cash. Couldn't agree more. They messed up. Cardinal rule of corruption. It's not surprising Disney is upset. No one would expect a company that's grown obese on a steady diet of gigantic portions of exemptions and privileges to peacefully pass back the plate. Oh, my God. That's such a good image of the obese rat gorging itself on our CID and the theme parks. Such a good visual. Jay Lozano continuing with federal crimes, fraud and false statements, misuse of federal funds, which is applicable. Yeah, a lot there. So as a whole, RCID represented a stunning deviation from good governance standards of the state of Florida and other localities throughout the nation. These people would know they do the audits for most of the local governments in Florida. So this is the auditors who do the local government audits for most of Florida saying, yeah, this is a, this is a wild deviance. 
without real checks and balances, internal dissent and public decision-making was shut down. Competition was stifled, if not eliminated. What's more, citizens of Osseo and Orange County paid for the district without receiving their entitled rights and benefits. Self-reflection is key to self-improvement. It seems that conveniently the RCAD abstained from such necessary exercise in its 55 years. What follows then is the first substantial independent audit of an entity that refueled the rise and shielded the dominance of a company at the expense of public good. Its revelations are simply put shocking. I say so myself. I've been saying this for a while. This is beyond the pale. This is horribly shocking for anybody who's in this. This is their first real audit. And they are fucked. Jay Lozano says, Rico racketing influence corrupt actions. We got it. The AI is convicting them of Rico. I love it. Securities were fought in, uh, in relation to the bonds. Insider trading. Municipal securities rule board. Rules violations. Public offering fraud. We've got so many, and we're just getting started here. Do you guys, are you guys starting to understand why I'm covering Disney so much? You guys, do you guys understand why I covered Disney like this? Do you guys understand why I became an expert in this? It, it, it's not because there was no crimes here, no case here. It's because there's a crazy amount of cases here. There's so many criminal cases, there's civil cases, there's all sorts of corruption involved in this. It is nuts. It is nuts how much there is in here. And I'm going to be covering every single minute of it on the legal mindset. So if you guys you like this, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you still like the channel. YouTube is sloughing off my subscribers because that's what YouTube does. Every once in a while, like, hey, let's lose 100 here, 200 here. Make sure you're subscribed, guys. If you're tuning in, you're just watching the replay, whatever, subscribe to the channel. Like it, share it out, put it on Twitter, put it out there. But make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you get more of this. Jay Lozano says, sorry for the format on YouTube sucks. All good, brother. All good. Maria Trujillo says, understand something. Auditors become jaded real quick. For an auditor to come off as pissed in writing alone speaks volumes. Yes. For an auditor to go off, this is a lot. This is a lot. I am shocked. I have, we'll see. And I wanted to ask the other guy, because I've seen a million of these audits. I have never seen language like this in my life in a government audit. They are boring as hell. They will put you to sleep. The case of Disney in Central Florida must be a blaring national wake-up call to elected officials about problems inherent in creating special districts with the attributes of RCID. More specifically, complete unaccountable governmental power was handed over to a private corporation, transferring a democratic institution into a private corporate monopoly. Absolutely. Absolutely. The report process. Uh, House Bill 9B requires the Board of Supervisors to submit to the governor, the president, and the Senate, and the House of Representatives within one year after the effective date a report to review all remaining powers and authorities. So this is the report that was required by law. So they found Donald Koken, or let's call him Donnie K. Donnie K who's professor of law and economics at the George Mason Antonin Scalia law school to produce a report to identify whether any constitutional or structural strengths or infirmities that exist in the former RCID. They are ex that is exhibit one. It is the national recognized expert in property and land use law. Hats off to a fellow property expert. Uh, as you guys know, I teach property law and business law for uh, Andrew Branca's American law courses. I'm teaching business law now, but I will be doing property law again in the future. Right. And uh, I respect it. I love property law. It's great. It's my bread and butter. It is fantastic. So fascinating. Um, JL says this isn't written by the F CFTOD. CFTOD helped contribute to it, but the experts collaborated to create this report. So the CFD compiled it. It's expert reports that were compiled by the CFTOD. Does that make sense? CFD compiled it. Tank Rat says, so in other words, uh, Iger's Disney will, if all this crap comes to a group of criminal courts, I don't think Iger's Disney will survive it. No, no. If all of this hits, 
Tank Rat, if this hits a criminal court, Igris Disney is fucked. They picked a fight with Elon. They picked a fight with America, with all conservatives. They picked a fight with children. They picked a fight with other countries. They picked a fight with decency. And they think they can win against all these things, against good storytelling. Like they don't, Disney, Disney is fighting everybody. They can't do that. It's not sustainable for a corporation to be battling on all fronts for no purpose to its own detriment. Doesn't make any sense. So anyways, he's a property law Chad. Next is William Jennings, who I know of the senior director of the Delta Consulting Group, who reviews accounting and financial policies and practices. He has more than 40 years in forensic accounting. He's provided expert testimony in domestic and international courts. He's conducted investigations for the U.S. SEC, for the DOJ, for the Marshal Services. He is a CPA and an ABV, or CFF and CFE certifications. For the district, he is, um, which is a certified financial um, uh, expert, right? So he is a uh, independent review and forensic accounting investigation of their past and present financial related practices. He visited their offices, interviewed personnel, gathered information, including electronic data by district personnel and available public records. He produced an expert report describing individual results, which is exhibit two. He will be a prime expert witness in the trial. Uh, Jennings will be an expert witness in the trials. <coughs> I'm guaranteed. <coughs> this guy knows his stuff. This is not some like rinky dink backyard auditor. This is a guy who's done serious stuff. Um, also, they hired Kim Lee Horn. Once again, I've worked a lot with Kim Lee Horn. <laughs> to develop an urban planning report on RCID in the city of Bay Lake and Buena Vista. Their report is attached as Exhibit 3. They're one of the premier engineering design consulting firms in the U.S. They're number one in building design, and they're the top 80 engineering firms. Every year, they've been recognized as uh, Engineering News' number one top green design firms with more than 100 of the firm's professionals earning lead accreditations. They have a team of experts, including uh, urban planners, civil and env environmental engineers, transportation planners. They have all sorts of planners. And they also work with Professor Koken. Uh, they also hired the Public Resources Advisory Group, PRAG, to serve as the independent financial advisor. They're a nationally recognized independent financial advisory firm that serves state and local governments. They're registered as a municipal advisor with the uh, Security Rules Making Board and within the SEC. They're also a registered investment advisor. They are. They produced a memoranda, which is attached to Exhibit 4. They hired Rafa Tellis to serve as a utility rate-setting expert in relation to the district's labor services agreement with RCES, which is what I reviewed. I reviewed that contract, and I said, after reviewing that contract, that that contract was suspect. I reviewed the RCES live on my stream. So, guys, you can go check that out. So I guarantee my analysis and their analysis, pretty simpatico. Hmm. Wonder why that happened. Hmm. Wonder why Andrew's analysis was adopted by the experts. Maybe because I know what I'm talking about. David Lopez for 49 says, and Disney is going to be F when Heyo Miyazaki's Boy in the Heron comes out on Friday. I'm so excited about that movie. That movie is going to be great. A Miyazaki movies are great. It looks fantastic. The boy in the hair looks fantastic. That's going to kill it. It's going to make the Marvels look like a joke. Look like a joke. All right, continuing here. So they're going to go after RCES. All right, here's a summary of the report. This is the bread and butter here. Our, and RCID was created, and I'm going to skim this because we know a lot of this, right? So RCID was created by an active legislature. Disney controlled RCID. Members were elected by Disney, which voted in all of the members, right? They were only elected if they owned land in the district. So what Disney did was they temporarily deeded five-acre plots of Disneyland to board members to hold while they were serving. 
This was a sham. They also paid the property tax liability that the board members incurred as a result of owning the property. This is also illegal. That's illegal. So, yeah. Yeah, they were all that time, they were breaking the law. This is an improper cash gift to board members and evidence of their capture. Yeah, it's a 100% improper gift. Maria Trujillo says, wow, Jennings must have seen some wild things. I'm sure, and he's seen wild things, and he still is saying this. He still is endorsing this. Mind you, all of these experts are endorsing this. Out on its own, this arrangement guaranteed that board members as a whole would be responsive to Disney's preference and serve Disney's interests. The process of electing board members did not involve any other property owners or stakeholders. They had unilateral control. Disney also controlled two cities, Bay Lake and Buena Vista. Neither had any employees. Each of the residents were Disney employees renting mobile home plots from Disney. Shout out to WDW Pro, who always is calling out the mobile homes at the end of the cul-de-sac, baby. These arrangements gave Disney something unique, the power to govern itself, a pocket government. No other special district was granted the power. Other theme parks like Universal Studios and large developments like the Villages do not enjoy the same breadth of benefits and are subject to county land use planning and regulations from which Disney is exempt. While the Villages or Universal Studios might be located in a quote-unquote special district, the super special nature, I love that. I love that. The villages and Universal Studios, they do have special districts, but Disney's is super special. Theirs is a privilege only Disney enjoyed enjoying being exempt from requirements that bound all other developments gave them a leg up, gave the ability to pursue its interests at the expense of its neighbors and stakeholders in the region. It is the kind of arrangement that had it been a good idea, other parts of the company country would have replicated. For reasons that are now apparent, they have not. It was corrupt. Obviously, they wouldn't do this. Disney accomplished regulatory capture by showering gifts and lavish spending on RCID employees and creating the illusion that these employees work to achieve the interests of Disney, not the district and other property owners. RCID management and the Board of Supervisors facilitated this capture of RCID employees. Disney facilitated, cultivated this perspective by making complimentary annual passes and steep Disney discounts available to employees, retirees, members of the Board of Supervisors and VIP vendors on the same terms as Disney employees known as cast members. They initially provided these benefits free, but later RCID began paying Disney, which amounted to millions of dollars annually. This is millions of dollars of misappropriation of public funds. Millions. Okay, this is nuts. And by the way, these employees are so brainwashed. Go watch my Disney Defender stream. Watch that guy with his little Disney Defender shirt. They are so brainwashed. They don't believe what they're doing is illegal. They brainwash the employees to such a point that the employees don't believe what they're doing is illegal, even when they're told what they're doing is illegal. This is the park pass deal. That is why they the employees flipped out because they were they were programmed to believe it was okay because Disney told them so. But actually, it's not. It was always illegal, right? Okay, continuing here. And we're already an hour and 39 minutes in. And we're not even past the summary. Oh, man, we're 16 pages in. All right, we'll go, we'll go into speed mode here. RCID seems to have misle misleadingly concealed the purpose of multi-million dollar annual payments on its financial reports 
Holy shit, they lied on their financial reports? That's huge. That's a crime. Labeling them financial and administrative services, when in fact they were administ- they were perks given to employees. They're not financial services. They're employee perks. When in Disney paid for these benefits, they were improper akin to bribes of public officials and employees. Things were not better when RCID reimbursed Disney because most employees were not aware of the reimbursement scheme and they believed the perks they received were gifts. They were reimbursing Disney and they believed that Disney was giving them as a gift. They lied to the line employees and said, oh, Disney is doing this as a gift to us when the public is paying them for them. This is just the summary. RCID displayed clear favoritism by reimbursing purchases only for Disney purchases and not for items purchased from other district taxpayers. This was effectively a subsidy benefiting Disney not available to other taxpayers. So they don't get a discount at the gas station or at the hotel or the restaurant, only at Disney. To be specific, RCID employees receive millions of dollars of annual passes for entry to Disney theme parks worldwide for at least the RCID recipient and three family members, 40% discount on Disney cruises, free transferable single-use tickets during the holiday season, steep discounts on Disney merchandise, steep discounts on food and beverage in Disney theme parks and resorts, access to non-binding, non-public shopping reserved for cast members, where merchandise was steeply discounted. So they were buying from the cast purchasing. Uh, they were, that that's all illegal, all this illegal. In published materials, RCAD employees were aware they were receiving cast member benefits. RCAD management and board of supervisors chose to make these benefits available to employees. Disney achieved its objective, ensuring RCID employees would serve Disney interests alone. RCID employees came to believe that it was appropriate for RCID to do things that the taxpayer or landowner requested because such requests were inherently cost neutral because Disney was simultaneously the primary payer of taxes. That's an incorrect view of the government's role. Boom! He said it, not me. This is an incorrect view of the government's role, which is to serve the public interest. So it must be concerned whether any action is wise, prudent, and public regarding. It is factually inaccurate because Disney is not the only taxpayer in the district. Other landowners and businesses, including shops, restaurants, hotels, pay taxes, and tenants who lease from Disney were obligated to pay common area charges to Disney, including property taxes. In other words, Even tax payments that Disney directly transmits to the district include tax payments made by non-Disney entities who are tenants of Disney-owned property. So they have rights too. These other people have rights too. Not just Disney. Moreover, the cast member benefits were valuable. The cost range per employee, per employee, they were receiving between three thousand six hundred to four thousand eight hundred in per employee benefits. That amounts to an annual cost between one point seven eight and two point five million dollars. Holy shit! Remarkably. They elected not to treat these benefits as taxable employee benefits, contrary to federal law and IRS regulations. Guys, there it is. The auditor just directly said, directly said that they violated federal securities and tax law. The IRS and SEC need to get involved now because they said that. When an auditor says, you broke tax and SEC law, 
if they don't get involved, then it's some Bidenomics. It's some it's some real Democratic cronyism. They, it, when an auditor says that they're violating federal tax and SEC law, this is an issue. We're talking an SEC investigation for this. By the way, Disney has disclosed a lot of things to the SEC. You know what Disney hasn't disclosed? Illegal governmental activities. Okay? They have not disclosed to the SEC that they are violating, that they violated law and they evaded taxes. They're not going to get out of it. Tiger's dad says if Chapek sings, does that violate his NDA? Nope. Not for federal crimes. They can't, they can't keep him from singing on that. Not for federal crimes. Besides, all that Chapek has to do to get out of his NDA is say that Bob Iger flirted with him. <laughs> you know that if you have any any NDA, if you just throw in something of a, of a sexual nature, so like some sort of harassment or whatever, hostile work environment. It automatically voids your NDA under current law. So just say that Iger winked at you and you felt uncomfortable. You know, when Iger said he's taking two showers a day, it made me uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. It felt it made me feel like he was inviting me to take a shower with him. He's like, you know, Shabek, I take two showers a day. I felt uncomfortable with that. Therefore, we need to we need to have a Me Too case against Iger. But you actually don't need to bring a case. You just need to have facts that are related to that. It's very the law is actually very weak on it's it's really interesting with NDAs and that sort of stuff. Tank Grant said at Tiger's Jad, good question. Can an NDA be nullified by giving evidence to witness court? No, it's not going to get him out of federal crimes. The NDA is not going to get him out of federal crimes. That there's always a that's a limit to an NDA, right? You can't ever contract away from criminal activity, right? You can't contract out of that. There's no contract you can sign that says, I can violate the law now. See, Andrew F. says, now I understand Sidney Watson's case will blaze, don't you? Because all you have to do is allege something sexual and you get out of your NDA. That's how Sidney did it. Uh, Paul says, oh, Disney, aren't you just the cat's B.O.? Absolutely. Contrarian says, hello, sir. I represent a certain well-known pharmaceutical concern. Which state would be best to set up our special district? Clotland Acres. Needs to be zoned and flavored jab dispensers as well. Contrarian, may I suggest Justin Trudeau's Canada? That is, of course, before Pierre takes over. And we get a base Canada once again. I'm praying for a base Canada. Canada needs it. Canada desperately needs it. Uh, but yeah, I would I would suggest going to Toronto. They would be big fans of that. I guarantee. Um, or Tel Aviv. All right. Let's continue here. Uh, since 2023, the new Board of Supervisors and Management have worked to rectify this error. The district will be alerting the IRS of the issue, and it is in the process of correcting it. So the district itself is reporting it to the IRS. So the IR, the district is turning itself into the IRS. This is unprecedented that the district is going to turn itself into the IRS. The net result of RCID's old structure combined with Disney's internal conflict was that RCID served Disney's interests, not only the interests of other stakeholders, but the results that have been disastrous for the surrounding communities of Central Florida. Over 100,000 people work in the district. They must commute from elsewhere because the district has no workforce housing. Commuting creates traffic congestion, which deals with pollution, something they say they care about, Commuting is a hardship because individuals that work in the district, most jobs are low-wage jobs, and commuting takes a substantial bite out of wages. Commuting also contributes to a poor quality of life and lack of upward mobility in a region where individuals spend long hours driving, which wastes time, requires longer hours of childcare, and diminishes the time families spend together. Doesn't Disney care about poor people and families? 
Aren't they supposed to care about that? Well, apparently they don't. Industrious Bear says, I'm shocked, shocked that Disney has been violating the law. RCID, your passes, your free passes, sir. Yeah, none of that anymore. Now they just pay them money. Now they just pay them money, which is fair because you can spend money on anything, on absolutely anything. So great stuff. Um, let's see, continuing here. Uh, commuting is also made more difficult by deteriorating infrastructure, which is due to their failure to pay their impact fees. Developers in Orange County paid 3,600 in impact fees per hotel room. Per hotel room. When I represented Bonnet Creek and they built the new JW, they paid per hotel room. Right? Per hotel room. RCID never required Disney to pay impact fees. So Orange County was powerless to require it. If Orange County's current impact fees were applied to Disney's more than 36,000 hotel rooms, Disney would owe $130 million and never assessed impact fees that could have funded roadway projects to improve I-4 and alleviate traffic and improve commute conditions. The old RCID structure exacerbated by Disney's actions. By the way, Disney can be liable for this. Disney can be liable for this. This could be something Disney. We're talking about corporate liability. This is a potential liability. Now Disney's auditors need to put this in their liability column. You know what's going to be interesting? Disney's next disclosure to the SEC. Guys, think about this. Think about what Disney now has to file with the SEC. Disney has to file that they're being turned in to the IRS. Now, Brandon, I know what you, I see you in the stat saying most is state. Yes, there's a lot of state crimes. There's more state crimes than there's federal crimes. But there's also federal crimes in here. Okay? RCID, under the old act, failed public expectations. They also spent millions on Disney tickets and employees and hundreds of thousands of dollars on extravagant holiday parties retirement parties, and employee relations events. They spent thousands of dollars annually on years of service gifts and celebrations, paying for RCID employees to attend private Disney celebrations at theme parks. The former district administrator charges hundreds of thousands of dollars on his Amex for celebrations, sport tickets, memberships, meetings, and other events. Failure to adopt best practices that were expected of a basic Florida local government. They had inaccurate, inadequate procurement policies to ensure they obtained the best price and the highest quality goods. They engaged in race-conscious DEI that discriminated against... Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is killing me. <laughs> Holy shit. Look at this. Guys, look at this. Look at this. I'm going to zoom in. Hold on. There you go. Instead, instead of getting prices that were good, Disney chose to not get good prices, but instead actively discriminate on the basis of race. Wow. Wow. Peter Vettiger says, a member chat for seven months, says, a theory. Elon knew this was coming this week. Maybe, maybe he did. By the way, I'll say it on my stream. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. I know you're watching, Bob. Hi. Hi. John McGowan. Hi. How's it going? You're going to have a great time. You guys going to have a great time with us. Maria Trujillo says the IRS has to come down hard. If they don't, this could set a precedent. Uh, and they are not going to let that happen. I hate rooting for the IRS. I don't like rooting for the IRS either. It's like the first time in history where I'm like, you know what? I'm with the IRS. It's probably the first and only time I'm going to be on the side of the IRS. Because you know what? If we all have to get screwed by the IRS, so does Disney. 
if we have to pay the IRS, so does Disney, right? Why should Disney not have to pay when we pay? Why should they get out of it? If we're paying, they should pay too. Look, I'm all for libertarianism and reducing taxes and everything else like that, right? But like, if I'm paying, so are you. That's that's true equity. That's really equitable. That's real equity. We all should be paying our fair share. And for those that need to pay a fair share and do some time in jail, they need to do some time in jail. They need to do some time in jail. The district built three parking garages near Disney Springs that cost approximately $700 million. These garages benefited only Disney and the tenants on Disney property, yet they were financed by RCID's public resources. This is an example of how Disney used RCID as its private government to accomplish its own purposes at the expense of public resources. The district's other taxpayers were forced to pay almost $100 million for the garages that Disney sought. The other taxpayers had to pay a hundred million. You guys know that you guys know those garages in the chat. G for garage, if you've been there. The grapefruit garage, you know the grapefruit garage. What's the other one? Uh, there's like grapefruit. What is it? Citrus or lemon? What's the other one? It's like grapefruit, and there's another citrus one. Lime? Is it lime? Steve, you know them. Gazi, you know them. It, they're all citrus names. Geez, okay. I know grapefruit is there for sure. Yeah. Um, lime, yeah, there's like lime, grapefruit, and orange. There's orange too, right? So it's all the citrus. We're going real citrus with this. Going real citrus. I don't think I park in orange very much. I think I usually park in uh, lime or grapefruit. Uh, I'm not anti-Disney. I'm throwing, no, and look, Ted, I've never been anti-Disney because I like hate Disney. In fact, the people, I said this to J, uh, on Jonas's uh, Twitter, the people that are coming hard at Disney are people that want it to do well. I want Disney to change. I don't want Disney to go away. I want Disney to be great. I want it to go back to just doing theme park stuff and, and not doing a bunch of woke criminal activity. Let's, let's not do that, right? Let's follow the law and let's just do good stuff. Let's make good content. Can we just do that? Can we just be wholesome? Like, is that okay? Can we just be go back to being wholesome? Is that all right? Tank Rat says, I bet Iger and his lawyers are losing their mind right now over this report and have the SEC reporting to their IRS. By the way, Iger, go after yourself. You did this at Disney. I'd agreed. Here's the thing, Tank Rat. They've got to say something to the SEC. They cannot not report this and disclose this. The way they report it will be very telling, and I'm going to cover it on this channel. The way in which they say to the SEC, this is what we're doing is going to be very telling because they will essentially, by omission, confess. The SEC filing will be an omission, in, in, um, admission by omission. They're going to confess by what they leave out of the SEC report. This is what I am very interested to see. They've not filed it yet. They do have some time to file it. They do have like 10, you know, they have some time, probably 10, 15 days, maybe up to a month, but they're going to have to file it pretty damn soon. They're not going to get away with not filing this forever. That's going to be a big, a big thing. All right. Back to this. RCID engaged in a $70 million purchase of utility assets from Disney with no documented due diligence unfathomable for a government entity no way look i have worked in many governments there's no way there is no way they would ever buy 70 million dollars in equipment or assets and not have some sort of due diligence that's on paper they deferred road maintenance which led to increased future maintenance costs and inflation. So when they were fighting with Florida, they said, oh, we're just going to defer road maintenance. So they're going to screw over the future. They failed to maintain assets at the appropriate level, which would require the district to change its accounting approach or could negatively affect future bond ratings and interest rates on future bonds. So they went and screwed over future bonds.
they lacked any enforcement mechanism for code violations, for violations of its fire code, its building code. Fire prevention is critical to the hundreds of people visiting a district, i.e. Disney World, on a regular basis. Increase my fan here. It's a little, a little hot up in this, a little hot, hot up in here. But uh, sorry, I got it's getting a little hot in this room, so got to try to make it as strong as possible. All right. Yeah, Thailand tends to be a little hot. Not losing the jacket yet. Not losing the jacket yet. All right. There we go. So they lacked any enforcement mechanism. They were powerless to enforce its fire code. They couldn't issue fines for fire violations. They had no record or transcription of their meetings. They did not make agendas available in advance or publish them on the website. By the way, in Florida, it's required to have minutes of the meeting and to post those minutes, it's also required to be an agenda. It's required to have an agenda and to post it, to make it available for the public. They didn't do that. I'm not going full Camelot. I see you guys. I see you guys. Disney relied on Bay Lake and Buena Vista to carry out important tasks, including contracting to provide police protection. But these cities, which were in fact nothing like a real city, with all of which were Disney employees living in trailer parks, provided the, uh, so RCD provided the city's administrative services free of charge. They entered into a 40-year contract pledging to continuing to do so without any charge. <laughs> in 2023, they hired an outside contractor to serve as a city manager. Although they did so in violation of the Florida Constitution, which forbids a single individual from holding such positions for two cities simultaneously. Rut row. CFTOD exercised its right to terminate the sweetheart 40 year free of charge contract to provide administrative services to the city. So they no longer get free services. Disney exercised undue influence over RCD's operations in many ways, including influencing their permitting decisions. Other non-Disney district taxpayers were aware that if they chose vendors not approved by Disney for their construction and development, they could expect RCID to delay issuing permits for one quarter. This improperly coerced non-Disney district taxpayers into preferring Disney vendors. Guys, this is something I dealt with, okay? I dealt with this myself when I was working for Bonnet Creek, which was not Disney. Okay. In fact, all of Bonnet Creek is outside of Disney. They wanted to coerce us into using their approved contractors as part of our agreement. They wanted, let me get, let me make this clear. Disney said, we are not going to approve these permits unless you use our people the people we want you to use. That's really illegal. Very illegal. But they were doing it. And at the time, I'm like, you guys are going to get in trouble for this. But they're like, we don't care. We're RCID. And that's the attitude they had for the longest time. We are Laffy Taffy. And I knew it then, and I know it now. These guys are getting what they deserve. They're getting what they've been, they've been doing this stuff for a long time. They've been doing this stuff for a very long time. And they're getting it. Um, JL says, is this retarded or do they really think they're that good? They think they're that good. They really do. They really do. Zero Smoke says, thanks for your coverage. This legal mindset. Keep it up. I will. I'm not going to stay off this. I don't care what people say. There's like, oh, he's the crazy Disney employee. Disney, uh, the crazy Disney streamer. Don't care. I'm going to stay on it. Disney supports woke eyes, real, that eliminated Christians in Gaza. We canceled Disney Plus. Oh, good for you, canceling Disney Plus. JL says, is this retarded or did they think they're that good? They thought they're that good. I read that one twice, but there you go. So nice I read it twice. All right. 
Let's continue here. Dog on a bone. District administrator eliminated the approximately eight. Oh, so here we go. The off-duty police, which they were paying $8 million to annually to provide off-duty policing services. I actually had an ex-girlfriend that was a cop, which was a crazy, crazy three months of dating. But uh, they were always paid by the government, but they only policed Disney property. That's not fair. Other businesses, other businesses did not receive off-duty police and must contract and pay for it themselves when they require it. Only Disney got that, but it was paid for by the government. So CFTOD eliminated that. It's illegal. And they instead said, hey, y'all got to pay for it. Right? You guys got to pay for it. But it's not just going to go to Disney. If we, if we pay for it, it can't just go to Disney. Both city councils initially voted in favor of a reduced millage rate and budget. Over two weeks later, they convened special meetings to reverse the vote and ensure that Disney would continue to receive the exclusive beneficiary of taxpayer-funded off-duty officers. So ongoing violation there with the officers. In short, Disney created unprecedented privilege in the district, the privilege to govern itself free of the kinds of ordinary good citizen obligations that other corporations and businesses have throughout the state of Florida. No other competitor in the theme park or in the entertainment industry has enjoyed such a privilege, which has given Disney a clear commercial advantage. It is no wonder the legislature is considering how to restructure district to increase its public accountability. Disney was working behind the scenes to protect its RCID kingdom. Then we have the 11th hour agreements, the ones we've talked about ad nauseum, the ones about which we have the two legal cases. So with here, one board member asked, I'm assuming the way this, this is written, it doesn't change the way you're currently doing business. The district administrator says it does not. It basically memorializes what we have been doing. So that says that Disney alone was always the one benefiting from this. Disney alone was always the one solely benefiting here. The CFD uncovered these agreements and it hired outside counsel to evaluate their legality. Outside counsel determined emphatically that these contracts were illegal in a myriad of ways and void ab initio. These contracts are so illegal, they make a mockery of not just Florida law, but all law. The CFTOD's Board of Supervisors had outside counsel present. And on that same day, Disney filed their federal lawsuit. The day after, the district filed its own state court lawsuit. Both lawsuits are ongoing. So now we have the lawsuits going on right now. All right. So we got the expert reports. Let's read what the expert conclusions are. We're going to at least get through. Guys, we'll at least get through our two hours. I want to at least get through the expert reports. All right, let's continue. Professor Donald Coughlin, expert in property law, property law, and reviewed the old act and provided expert analysis attached to Exhibit 1. Professor Coughlin concluded the district, as constituted by the Florida legislature, was a sui generis, that means one of a kind, special district, unlike any in Florida or anywhere in the U.S., controlled by Disney. He said it obtained this unique status through bait without even a switch. Disney lobbied the Florida legislature for its powerful, unilateral, and unaccountable special district by claiming it would build a city on central Florida property. Once Disney secured the special district, it sought and abandoned the city-building premise. The historical record demonstrates that Disney disdained voters from the outset, and it did not want its special district or corporate choices to be subject to public accountability through prop, uh, popular elections despite how it may have marketed its ideas to the legislature. Disney consultants on the Disney World and Special District Project advised Disney to limit it the scope of democracy so Disney would be freed from impediments to change, such as elected political officials. Um, documentary evidence from Walt Disney himself makes clear that he did not want permanent residents in his model community. Okay, so it says Walt actually did not want permanent residents. He wanted them to be 
temporary residents or employees, I think. But the legislature did not tie the privileges to any enforceable metrics, so Disney could abandon its promises without repercussions. He describes that interest groups like Disney achieved their corporate objectives by influencing government. Disney enjoyed masking its true intention of legislative proposals by cloaking it in lofty rhetoric that disguised the wealth transfer benefiting Disney. Its rhetoric about futurism, progress, and urban renewal, uh, a pressing issue in the 1960s, and economic growth. They were saying the right things. What is this? Disney and Iger, they do the same thing nowadays. What do they do? Support current thing. Support current thing. In the 60s, current thing was economic progress. That was current thing. Now, current thing is woke stuff. Disney just changed the thing. They've updated it. Disney preserved its influence over government in a variety of ways, including giving public officials free passes, creating a goodwill nature and a feeling of indebtedness towards Disney. As conceived by Disney, the district under the old act dispensed with democratic protections and that characterized federal, state, and local government in the U.S. While perceived efficiency might be good for private enterprise, it cannot be the lodestar of government action. Yet in the district, it was. By the way, he uses lodestar because this is, uh, this is legal language for what is illegal. This is clearly illegal. Because the Disney ran the district, its land use and planning decisions were not subject to veto points and choke points, which were purposeful institutional restraints in our constitutional system. These barriers and blockages force deliberation that promotes better, if even if slower, decision making. Disney made all decisions for itself without the need to deliberate. So he goes over public theory, rent-seeking behaviors, and corporate influence on government. So there's a lot of that in, in number one. Now we get Billy Jennings, forensic accountant. So we went over the uh, records, the financials. He concluded <laughs> that the former district administrator had incurred nearly $166,000 in Amex charges for retirement parties, holiday parties, city resident parties, tickets during a 15-month period. Guys, this is not over his career. This is essentially over a little more than a year. He racked up 166K in illegal charges. These were all illegal. Mr. Jennings uncovered numerous flaws in contract sourcing, procurement, administration, Unclear approval processes, documentation, lack of vendor management, procurements without competition, mechanisms to determine whether the goods and services produced are of the highest quality and competitively priced. He determined they contract to pay Disney 7.7 .7 for expected impact fees due to road construction affecting a Disney golf course. Yet no evidence shows they were actually performing an economic analysis. They just gave Disney 7.7 .7 million. With no analysis. Jennings further detailed that RCID provided administrative services to Bay Lake and Winnipeg to free of charge. It deferred road maintenance and underfunded road maintenance that has affected the balance of the district's general fund. Disney lawyers denied Mr. Jennings access to utility records or employees to access the condition or make recommendations of the eight utilities owned by the district and managed by RCIS. Guys, this is a huge violation of the law. They are denying access to records, to government records. This is also a crime. This right here is a crime. This is why a lawyer has to analyze this, because you're going down, you're like, this is a crime. This is a potential crime, right? It's got to be go to trial. They've got to be convicted of it. But like, this is pretty clear. You can't say no when a government wants to check its own assets, okay? Imagine that you own something, right? Uh, let's say you own a boat and you pay for the docking for that boat, right? You pay for all, you're, you're good and paid. But the harbor master 
won't let you see the boat or access the boat at all. You've paid, but they're just like, no, we're just not letting you access your boat. It's like, it's my boat. Let me on the boat, buddy. I paid. And they're not letting you. Crazy. Crazy. Highwind says, this will be Bob's legacy in the end. Ride of a lifetime is going to end up crash of the lifetime. I guarantee it. Think he'll run to China. Maybe that's why he's investing so much there for his retirement hole. That could be. Could be. He might be over here in this part of the world. And guys, if he's over here in Asia, I'll hunt him down. If he's over here in Asia, I'll find Bob. Bob, come to Asia. I'm coming for you, baby. Don't think you can hide under some red banners. You got eyes on you, Bob. You got eyes on you, Bob. Uh, so, yeah, he could run. He could run. We could see it. It could happen. Uh, that would be smart of him to get out while this is flailing. To continue here, let's get to Kimley Horn. I saw someone say they're Kimley Horny for this report. It's a great report. Guys, smash the like button. There is a 1,000 of you in this chat, 790 likes. Get to 800. Please smash the like button if you like this. Please. Just, just all I'm asking you. The memberships have been epic today. We have been crushing it on memberships. Thank you so much. 323, a record-setting amount of members today on this stream. A great support from you guys, a great support of locals, Rumble, everywhere else. But just make sure to support the stream and share it with your friends right? Like it and share it out. Share it on Twitter. Clip it. All of you, you have permission to clip this, make as much money as you want clipping this. Take all you want from this. Take all the data. Go to my locals after this. I'm going to post the audit, talk about it, get into it. It's great. All of you creators out there, grift off it all the way. I support you. Kimley Horn has investigated their past land use and zoning practices and compiled a report stating that the comprehensive report that they adopted in 91 is no longer a state-of-the-art plan. The comprehensive report focused almost entirely on optimizing corporate goals rather than considering responding to the district's needs. It does not account for the state-of-the-art local government planning concepts like those set out in Metro Plan Orlando. This includes balancing jobs and housing to be closer together to reduce, to reduce vehicle miles and hours traveled to reduce traffic congestion on the stressed regional roadway. The plan does not fully meet some of its, zone, its goals and objectives, including those related to affordable housing, workforce, employment, and sustainability. It lacks diversity in land uses. It excessively relies on large parking lots that create adverse environmental and land use benefits. Boom! Shout out to Goofy Parking, because Goofy Parking is indeed goofy. Between 2019, the workforce required by Disney to grow from 70,000 to 100,000 and could add another 30,000. They concluded the current comprehensive plan does not adequately address this growth. So they have their exhibit three. So here's, uh, so they attach those as exhibits, right? So let's go down. So we're not going to talk about the history and the, the and let me zoom out here. We've gone through the history. If you want to hear the history of the district, you can go and, and get that. What I want to get down to here is not the history, not the structure we've talked about in that on this channel, ad nauseum. What I want to get to is the issues, right? The issues, the negative outcomes. This is what I think we should focus on and I think we should get through here today. Um, is the negative outcomes. By the way, Scorpio Black, Dra Black Dragon says, looks like nobody is sleeping this week. Nope. Everybody's going to be wide awake this week. This is going to be a big one for all of us. I'm going to be streaming all week on this, uh, going deep in depth with some of the crimes and the stuff. This is going to be a busy week for all of us. And I'm here for it. It's what I live for. Compromised integrity. So as stated through the report, RCID did not operate as an independent local government, but rather effectively as a corporate subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company. Disney controlled the membership of the Board of Supervisors so the public had little to no influence on the district court's policies. The Board of Supervisors' decision-making resolutions were significantly, if not entirely, controlled by Disney's corporate interests. Although RCID is technically a public entity with public notice and public meetings, there was little reason for the public to participate. That's why no one ever came to their meetings. No one. 
The Board of Supervisors granted the district administrator authority to act in many cases without action of the board or without any review, which is illegal in some stances, but it's highly inappropriate where it's not illegal. Thus, with little transparency and no practical reason for the public or smaller businesses or taxpayers to petition the Board of Supervisors, the public and non-Disney businesses were sidelined in favor of Disney objectives. Public participation and input effectively had zero role in their decision-making. They also captured RCID's loyalty by making Disney perks available to RCID employees on the same term as cast members. These perks included high-end annual passes, steep discounts on cruises, dining, and merchandise, and access to cast-only shopping depots, discounted entrance to ticketed Disney special events, and other perks. The benefits created the mindset at RCID that employees were supposed to serve Disney, not the public good and not other taxpayers. The prevailing mindset was that RCID does precisely what Disney wanted because Disney was paying the taxes, which is not true. They were paying a lot of taxes, the majority, but not all. That was false and pernicious because it should have always acted in the public's interest. Boom. That's what I said right there. Was any given decision a wise and prudent public regarding idea within the limits of RCID's authority? They never thought about that. They never placed limitations on themselves, ever. Maria says, so far we have tax, business, government, property, accounting, labor. What's next? Banking, stock and investment? Oh, yeah. Oh, just wait. Just wait for the securities fraud. Just wait for the bond fraud. That's there too, baby. Asher says, no way the DOJ and IRS pursues this. Guess what? They have to at least investigate it, Asher. Here's the thing. Biden may not want to prosecute it, but they have to investigate it. They have to investigate it. If they do not investigate it, they are actually derelicting a duty. It's, it's an extreme dereliction of duty. Because when the district is reporting themselves to the IRS, which they said they will do, they have to look into that. There's, there's not really a way around that. Even in Bidenomics. Even in Bidenomics. Uh, second, 57, 57, 57 other landowners pay tax to RCID. These other taxpayers' interests should matter. They should be entitled to integrity, transparency, and accountability on equal terms with larger taxpayers. The direct tax benefits to the district contain pass-through tax payments called CAM that Disney receives. This narrative that Disney was a taxpayer landowner was false and improperly influenced decision-making at RCID. Because of Disney's corporate influence, the, account, the autonomy, legitimacy of RCID was in question. Infrastructure development, zoning, regulation, environmental regulation, public safety clearly prioritized Disney's benefit. Such a focus not only undermines the original mandate, but as a public entity raises questions regarding transparency, fairness, and legality. So in most local governments, land use and municipal services are a source of intense public and media scrutiny, not in RCID. There's a cozy relationship. What Disney wants to get approved is approved. Zero transparency. Questionable purpose. The purpose was intrinsically linked to their ambitious vision for Epcot. They presented a vision for Epcot, which never came through. Walt's promise to bring an incredible urban dev development to Central Florida never materialized. Instead, RCID became a public body in service of a commercial theme park and resort. Next, limited function. When the purpose of RCID shifted to, from creating a novel urban community to supporting a theme park, the focus shifted on providing a broad range of municipal services to addressing the specific needs of a theme park. They did not provide other services typically associated with city, county, and local government, such as social services. What social services were they providing? Zero. Zero. 
potential corruption. Oh, I bet you it's more than potential, baby. The facts described create the risk of corruption and potential fraud in the district. Conflicts of interest, certainly the appearance of conflicts of interest, were common in their governments. Common. Because they controlled the Board of Supervisors, they effectively reported to Disney and represented Disney's interests. A board member would know they would lose their position by acting against Disney's interests. This created the potential for corruption. Urban planning. Urban planning suffered under Disney. They've grown to now 100,000 people working there, but they have not prioritized the things that benefit the workers. Only prioritize things that benefit Disney. They failed to develop workforce housing within the district, placing pressure on employees to obtain housing in neighboring communities and leave those communities to provide services to Central Florida. So Kissimmee, for years, the ghettos in Kissimmee, Kissimmee, Osceola County, Orange County, have been paying for Disney. The slums outside on 192, you guys know those slums outside by Vista Vista K or Vista Lay, as they call it? The Disney slums, the cast member slums near there. It's all off. It's all off. They're all rat ghettos. They increased congestion. They drove up maintenance for everybody else but them. They have no schools or hospitals. Everybody else pays their educational and healthcare costs. None. So going into their problems, and I'm going to just summarize them here. Lack of governing and conflicts of interest, huge problem. You need to have a conflict of interest policy. You got to have. It. Number two, lack of independence. Their board of supervisors was not independent and functioned as Disney's proxy. Boom, another violation. Conflicts of interest. They did not have a general counsel, meaning a lawyer. Instead, Disney relied on Disney's legal staff for its legal services. <laughs> Look at this, guys. <laughs> Who have I been calling out this entire time? OGs in the chat. Who have I been calling out this entire time? I've said a couple names here. Ed Milgram. Ed Milgram of the Milgram Law Group. Come at me, bro. Hey, Ed Milgram. Go fuck yourself. So Ed Milgram of the Milgram Law Group. So I'll say it right now. It's what you get for not responding to my emails, Ed. Should have, should have responded to my emails, mofo. All right. He did, he did eventually respond, but not fast enough. It's very slow. And I had to go through John McGowan, Disney's counsel. All right. So for the ma vast majority of its history, RCA did not have a general counsel. They relied on Disney's legal staff. Around 2019, they hired the Milgram Law Group as outside counsel. In the engagement letter, Milgram disclosed it represented Disney in real estate matters. And Milgram said it will not represent any client, including Disney, in matters in which Milgram terms are directly adverse to. So it already was representing Disney. It had a potential conflict of interest baked in. The engagement rule does not explain as required by the rules of professional conduct. There it is, guys, right there. I said it before. Their attorneys are fucked. I said this early. You guys remember this. Remember my streams when I said John and Ed? They're in deep shit because they were breaking our professional rules. And now we have an audit which confirms that they were not acting professionally. Their lawyers were not acting professionally. This is why I got so mad because I acted professionally. I held myself above the law and they were not holding themselves to any standard. They were clearly below it and knowingly below that standard. And we told them privately, you're going to get in trouble for this. And they just brushed it off. They said, we're Disney. We're RCID. We're, nobody touches us. Well, they're learning now. They're going to be taking a trip to those bar hearings. That's going to be a good one for them. Oh, my hair's all messed up. Hair's messed up today. My, my, my totally, you know, totally, uh, totally fake hair, you know. 
All right. Let's continue here. Instead, RCID's outside counsel reserved to itself the discretion to determine whether in any given matter its representation of Disney would be directly adverse to RCID. No indication the firm would disclose to RCID either the existence of a potential conflict or the firm's conclusion that a potential conflict would not result in direct adversity. You have to do an adversity study as a lawyer. You need to discover whether you are adverse to a client. You cannot engage with a client that you're adverse to. You have to stay above board. I never represented a client where there was even a shadow of a conflict. Even a related affiliate, none of that game. Disney's lawyers are in trouble. And if Disney's lawyers get in, oh boy, here we go. Moreover, in some instances, no amount of disclosure by Milgram would have sufficed to allow the firm to represent that RCID, the conflict between RCID and Disney was disqualifying under the applicable, applicable rules of professional conduct. For example... RCID lacked independent legal counsel when considering and purporting to enter into the development agreement, which ceded all development decisions to Disney for decades. Communications between Milgram and Disney's counsel, John McGowan, there he is. Joe, by the way, he's getting deposed. He's getting deposed. They show, those emails show, that Disney drafted both our documents and Milgram attempted to hide that fact by putting his name as the drafter because of poor optics about the honest disclosure of the drafter's identity. The email says, my name, McGowan, is currently at the top of the, doc of the document as a drafter, and I am comfortable having my name on it, but from an optics perspective, that is not ideal and it would be better to have a non-Disney employee be the drafter. The Vogel legal team do not want to put their name on it, unfortunately, because they are a Tallahassee firm and do work for the governor, unfortunately. I love how they put unfortunately in there. Would you, Ed Milgram, be willing to put your name on as a drafter? So they literally said this in writing. They wrote, they put their hiding this in writing. Right? This is crazy. A review of Milgram's documents relating to the agreements confirmed the firm made minimal changes to the drafts and accepted feedback when given by Disney's lawyers. Other changes, other examples of Disney's unilateral control over the transaction include when Disney's counsel edited the text of an agenda item during which the district held its first improperly noticed hearing on the development agreement. Booyah, that's illegal. They changed a district employee's talking points for February 22, because in Disney's view, less is more, less is more. Simply put, at the same time Milgram was representing RCID, it was also representing Disney, a party that stood on the opposite side of the transaction. A true independent counsel would have reviewed the legal agreements for substance and at minimum identified possible violations of clear procedural and substantive Florida constitutional, statutory, and common law that precluded RCID from entering into them. Instead, RCID's counsel in the transaction accepted the documents for the transaction and the agenda. When the Board of Supervisors considered the agreements, they indicated they saw this as business as usual for the district. One board member said, I'm assuming the way this is written, it does not change the way you're currently doing business. The former DA said it does not it basically memorializes how we've been doing it. And the, and the key is they've been doing it illegally for decades. The key is they were violating the law for decades. Uh, chat here from Archer Merchant. I think this was time to hit Iger hard. After the financial earnings, they certainly didn't say 80% value is the parks during a smoke and mirror session. Oh, no, no, no. And here's the thing. When, look, I told you that the governor's office and, and the folks there, they had been saying, oh, it's coming. Just wait. It's here. This is it. This is the bombshell, guys. This is going to have repercussions that, look, a thousand of you are seeing this right now. We're going to have tens of thousands. We're going to have, this is going to blow up all over the news. And the only people talking about it are going to be here. When Disney is hit with SEC investigation, even if it's just investigation, who's been talking about that? Nobody. They've all been simping for Disney. Legal schmeagle, 
dude with weird Disney hats. Even other lawyers, even other supposedly some supposedly conservative lawyers have been simping for Disney. They're all going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe they'll go and say, oh, it's all political retaliation. This is not retaliation. These are just facts. Like, forget about Ron DeSantis. It doesn't matter who's governor. The governor could be anybody. The governor could be Chris Kringle. This is still illegal. Like, the law is the law. This is not up for debate. It's not a Republican issue or a Democratic issue, by the way. In fact, Democratic politicians in Florida, when they've been governor, have generally supported government transparency. It's not something that a political party is against, although at this point, they may go that direction. Lots, uh, lost in the law says, would you consider it shocking conduct if police used a deep fake of a suspect's mother urging her son to confess to a violent crime? Sure. I mean, that lots of thought. Yeah, that's, that's wildly off topic, but yeah, that would be pretty shocking to me. Deep fakes are pretty shocking, if the, especially if the government uses the deep fake, right? A lot of people are simping for corporations, and even I find libertarians simping for corporations, and this is why I kind of expose it here, right? Is this is corporatism. Corporatism is not libertarianism. Uh, bias at the taxpayer's expense. So Disney controls all of these cities. They also formally control the RCID. The cities pay for the police protection. The police protection only benefits Disney. They receive private police, police protection, excuse me, paid for with public money. Hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars supplied per year. Oh, sorry, excuse me. 23 to 30 million annually on police, 8 million of which is off duty police serving Disney's private property. Private property. Non Disney entities have to pay for it themselves. So they address this. The district administrator attempted to address this. The cities, which are still controlled, I believe, by Disney, tried to go against that. And they tried to maintain that benefit for the cities that they own, Bay Lake and Buena Vista, are still trying to control those police officers and still trying to use those illegal bucks because Disney cannot afford to pay for them right now. It is not in the budget. And if Disney was to start paying for it, it would expose what they're doing that's illegal. If Disney was to suddenly start paying for it, it would expose that Disney was engaged in illegal activities. So Disney's like, oh, actually, we can't pay for can't pay for this all right lack of intergovernmental and community relations well they, they don't they don't work well with anybody i can just tell you that right now they play uh, as somebody who represented right all of the surrounding districts right so i represented celebration bonna creek reunion mystic dunes right all those developments around that was, that was your boy right here your boy right they're assholes they, they don't play nice with anybody. Nothing is easy with them. You have to get on hand and foot like you're going to like a absolute monarch. This is like you're going back to like old imperial China or something. This is this like ridiculous, like in front of the emperor or something. Absolute ridiculousness. And that's how you've always had to play with them. They don't play well with anybody else. They always are creating problems. So they expanded. They haven't taken care of 192. They uh, haven't allowed anybody. They haven't cooperated with anybody. Right here it says the Hyatt Orlando Resort is a case study in the blight caused by Disney's expansion. At the height of the tourist boom, the Hyatt Orlando was the model hotel of the future. It was five minutes from Disney and not part of Disney's property. It had 3,400 rooms in a convention center. At the time, it was Florida's largest hotel, steeped in the energy of Walt's futurism as embodied in Epcot. With a prime location, Hyatt saw continued success with multiple Disney theme parks and Universal Studios. But as Disney continued to expand, including by granting exclusive theme park perks to guests staying on Disney property, Hyatt suffered and was forced to close. Today, it is a blight on the 192 corridor, an abandoned property allowed to decay, visited only by trespassers seeking eerie footage of the futuristic hotel overgrown in vegetation and mold, right? So true. So true. Here we go. 
Businesses on 192 struggled, so did their employees. Wages stagnated, businesses closed. Many who work on 192 found it difficult to afford homes. Families with school aged children have been um, have made homelessness. They've been made homeless, right? They are living a homeless lifestyle and forced to live in substandard conditions, including motels along 192. Shout out, who do they cite there? Uh, homelessness at the gates of Disney, thousands living in home in homeless, uh, you know, motels, encampments, and cars in the shadow of the most magical place on earth. Others are forced to commute long distances that have become prohibitive because of lack of sufficient employment, loss of housing, or generational poverty. A hundred thousand people serve at Disney. Exponential growth, and they have paid for nothing. No hospitals, no schools, no educating children. They don't contribute to Osceola County, to Orange County, to any of the infrastructure. As Congressman Darren Soto says, the lack of transportation infrastructure particularly hurts many residents in the region who are home insecure. Prices have shot in houses, have skyrocketed. So you have homelessness, you have a problem with low wages, and Disney pays jack for it. They contribute nothing towards it. So we get into poor governance. They have agency captures. We talked about how their gifts capture the employees. We talk about the annual passes. We talked about how those are an improper benefit, which is indeed illegal, right? Those benefits were essentially a bribe on the public officials. The transferable tickets, those are another type of bribe, and they're only Disney passes, right? So because these employees get four additional passes that admit anybody, they only apply to Disney. It can only benefit Disney, right? They get Disney personnel numbers. RCID gives them Disney numbers that give them access to Disney's intranet. So they're treated as a Disney employee. They track their park attendance, spending, and other Disney benefits. Disney discounts. They get massive discounts on cruises, on theme park merchandise, on dining, holiday dining, Halloween events, special events, water park, golf, mini golf, Oak Trail discounts, water park discounts private retailer discounts, cast member days at uh, Disney Springs. They get Disney Years of Service Award, which are paid for by public funds. They're given Disney employee awards, which RCID pays for. They pay for those. They pay for them to be called cast members when they're not. They're celebrated, they go to the celebrations that are special cast member only events. That's all agency capture, all of them. So that's all favoritism, that's all uh, tilted towards Disney. They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on these things and they track little to none of the expenses. They don't track where they're going and they budget them improperly. They have the extensive charges on the American Express, we get into that. 166000 paying for the years of service awards, giving them benefits like health benefits from the Mayo Clinic. That's supposed to be a, I guess, a Disney benefit. So they're receiving above and beyond health care. Their management is really not following any management best practices. They have no record keeping, no policies to instruct employees. They're not doing good accounting. They're not collecting taxes or paying taxes on behalf of employees for complimentary tickets, which are a tax benefit, a fringe benefit. They're using their resources to manage Bay Lake and Buena Vista, which are solely Disney property. And they're doing bad record keeping. Like crappy, crappy record keeping. Are, we, are you guys getting the picture of the number of violations here? Like... There are so many violations here. It's it's really it, it, it's really insane. Well, let's just cover. I, I want to cover this at least last one here before we before we uh, summarize some of this. But entanglement between RCID and Disney. 
it's the it's the when things get too close, right? So look at this. Disney coordinated and confirmed agreements between BP and RCID using the email RCID broker at Disney.com. The BP energy agreement was through Disney. Disney arranged commodity swap transactions between RCID and JP Morgan Chase. Wait a second. Wait a second. This right here could be a securities violation. So we may have just found in this a securities violation by Disney facilitating purchasing of RCID bonds by JP Morgan. That's massive. That's massive. We've lost count of the of the claims. It's 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 untrackable at this point. That's undue influence. And here we go. The Reedy Creek Disney entanglement is most apparent in the relationship of D Reedy Creek Energy Services, RCES. Yes, I love when they talk about RCES. This is my pet, my pet issue. RCES is a subsidiary of Disney. It is a Disney employee run part of Disney. It's actual Disney. They extended their agreement at the last minute for 10 years with two 10-year extensions, so essentially 30 years, and the extensions are at the option of Disney. Historically, the gas, electric, water, chilled water, and hot water are run by the RCS, which is owned by Disney, but RCID owns the assets, right? They used bond funds to purchase them. And because bond funds were used to purchase those, those are public assets, okay? So because bond funds, which is what I did, my specialty was bond funds. I was the bond guy. Because they took public money through a tax-free bond, which they gained a bunch of money not paying tax on those bonds, and they used it to purchase those. Those are public. But Disney is not running them like they're public. They're running them like they're private. That's illegal. That's illegal. This is live said. Plus, Disney just paid Comcast $8.61 billion for the first payment for Hulu. They are now cash poor and unable to defend themselves from the forthcoming charge and lawsuits. They are going to have to be on their laurels. They have no money to defend this. To defend against multiple lawsuits federal investigation, criminal investigation. This is going to, their legal fees are going to get in the tens of millions quick overnight. Hundreds of millions uh, could be potentially, I mean, they're, they face so much potential liability. The scope of their liability is, is massive. The, the whole, entirety of the bonds could be called. This is massive for them. They could be required to pay back impact fees. They didn't pay those impact fees. They could say, you know what? You should have paid those. You've now got to pay those impact fees back. That's within the court's power. 130 million. Give me those for impact fees. Pay up. Entirely possible. Entirely possible. In addition to punitive damages or criminal penalties, above and beyond what they've done. JL says deal drop for lawsuits for non prosecution. Yeah or nay? Uh, individuals, I think individuals are going to start narking. Employees are not going to want to go down for this. They don't want to go down for the smoke. I think somebody snitches on Iger. I think somebody snitches on management. I don't think at this point when they see the ship sinking, why not? Disney employees, I'm talking to you. In fact, Disney employees, I'm talking to you right now. This is a time for you to jump ship, Disney employees. It's not getting better. Do you want to be there when you're terminated? Do you want to be there when your stock loses all your value? Or do you want to sell out while you still got some value left? Right. Well, you're still, well, you're still, you're still doing all right. You want to be cut another 50%? You want another 50% haircut? Get out now. Get out now. It's better to do it ahead of time. Get out now. Sign the agreement with the government. Tell them everything they want to know. Tell the criminal prosecutors what they want to know. Give over the books. Show them what you're hiding. Tell them the internal policies. We know they exist. It's time. It's time. Archer Merchant says, I have to agree this was a long time coming. Their hubris cut up. Your channel and others are more important than ever. No spin and violations. No, and I'm going to stay on it. Dehaco says you should write a book on this case. I probably will. I probably will. 
it'll take me longer than Gosney, but it'll probably it'll probably be. Yeah, I'll, it'll I'll do it. I, I'll, I'll definitely do it. It'll, it'll come. It'll come. It'll come. But what you can do to support me right now is to smash a like button on this video. 966 of you in the chat, 323 new members. Thank you so much. Huge support. And on Rumble, we've even got 200 people watching. We are balling out here on all the platforms. And I noticed the ghetto. See you all in the ghetto. And you guys staying up to listen to me talk about Disney, you're absolutely great. There's no record of RCID performing any due diligence related to a $70 million purchase, which is super irregular. And it's a dereliction of duty on part of the lawyers, the engineer, the administrator. They own various utilities and its contracts to maintain those are part of that agreement. Some RCID employees, including one who worked with RCIES, did not understand that RCES was a Disney-owned company. Employees thought the RCID, RCES, Disney relationship is a little complicated. That's what the employees say. On other occasions, RCID employees struggled to gain access they needed to RCID-owned equipment. For example, the need to photograph RCID equipment on Disney's back lot, where photo uh, photography is not allowed. Some aspects of RCID RCS relationship were impossible to untangle after the fact. For example, determining which entity had provided fuel for certain vehicles. During the transition from RCID to CFTOD, employees discussed the need to get more separation between RCID and Disney. On another occasion, RCID uh, employee described his description as being responsible for maintaining all the RCES buildings. Even though RCES is a Disney subsidiary, this employee described that RCES Disney employees are creating and managing the budget for RCID buildings that we are maintaining. So this whole relationship is super entangled. Minority and women-owned businesses. RCID began developing minority and owned business. This is going to be great. I got to read. We got to finish this one. We'll finish this one here. So they specified quotas. Quotas. They had hiring quotas for women and minorities. If they failed to meet their quota of POC or women, they were not selected. They were aware that they were demanding and they were high requirements. They understood this could be difficult and burdensome, and RCID lacked the staffing to manage these programs, yet they continued to they, they uh, continued to pursue it until the CFTOD transition, and they got rid of the woke shit. They deferred road maintenance, which they pushed down the road, and here we go. They used public resources for private purposes. Boom. This is a, this is a, a slam dunk case. This parking garage thing, $700 million to build them. They benefit only Disney and Disney property, yet RCID financed them through public bonds. Other taxpayers recognize the unfairness of paying tax dollars to the district always see money spent on projects that benefit the district, the Disney exclusively. So there we have it. The major conclusions, it gets into the expert, some of the expert uh, stuff, which we may go into later. I may have a part two stream here, but guys, it is, it has been a three hour stream. This is insane. This is nuts. And I'm going to be streaming all week on this. So we've got a lot to go on this. Market Reality says for 10, Andrew Esquire making property law and corporations exciting over here in Florida, making me jelly, sir. Listen, these are areas that normally are pretty boring. I'll admit it. They're normally boring. This is not boring. This is actually fascinating and crazy stuff when they're just they're just spitting in the face of just the concept of the law and they're just disregarding crimes, regulations, propriety, professionalism. This is the most depraved act I have seen in a while from any corporation as a whole. And I am here for it and I'm going to be covering every single minute of it. Disney is not going to get rid of me. Now, if you guys want something else to watch, Luke Blanche says for two bucks, Nick is live with Kyle Rittenhouse. Go check out Nick. Love Nick. Great guy. Go check him out with Kyle Rittenhouse that made his channel huge. 
that's definitely brought me on the map. So good stuff. In fact, what I will do here is I will actually redirect this to, oh, I already got, by the way, this stream got limited. So make sure you are, um, you are smashing the like button because they're trying to censor us. So I'm going to add a quick redirect um, to uh, Rackets. Um, so I think I can redirect to him right now. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to redirect to him after. So when I end, you guys can go over there. So, you know, you're welcome, Nick. You're welcome. Um, you guys are wonderful. Amazing. Smash the like button on all the platforms. Smash that plus the over there and rumble. I will be back later and I will be on this. So I will catch you guys later. Peace.